Okay, so now the recording is happening. Uh, let's see. Yes. Can we have a try to share? Maybe if I put it in YouTube also, you can get the access, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So to start with. So as you said, so we will go with all basics and everything only. I am not going to skip anything because you know. Uh, so we will cover uh, the entire topic with these content. Okay. okay. So yeah. So first of all, fundamental of testing. So we'll start with testing itself. Uh, suppose we have a development team here. Okay. And suppose there is a user. Okay. If the development team develops the code or the product, and then they directly give it to the user. Right. So here the risk is that the user is going to see all the defects or all the failures which is present in the product. To avoid this or to reduce the risk of this, what we do is that we introduce one process in between that is called as testing. So developer, once they develop the things, they pass it to the testing team. The testing team then do the thorough testing and then it is given to the user. When we do this, what, what is happening here is, for an example, if you have lots of bugs here, for example, I'm just writing here, suppose you have 15 bugs here. So what will happen? Testing team will, because they are doing the testing, there is a possibility they may find eight bugs. Okay, so instead of user, if, if this is the process, they have directly given it to the user, user would have found all 15 bugs possibly, or many bugs they would have found. But in this process, now from four defects only, the user will find some defects. So that is why this process is important to cross-check whatever was in the requirement, whether we have met that or not. So this okay. is process of testing. Now, so now, uh, as we mentioned, so this is the testing process. Now, what is the objective of this? It's not only just that we just find the defect, that is the major objective. So if in the question, if you get uh, which one of this is the best answer or major objective. So the major objective is to find the defects. Okay. Mm -hmm. so because I have seen sometimes four, four options they will give and you will see that all the four options are objective of, uh, objectives of testing. But in that, then you have to find the best one. So best one is to find the defect only. Then many things will come. Uh, but the main objective is to find the defect. Okay, so this is first. Okay, I problem. think I made I had made a uh, mistake here. I did get this question, objective of testing, and it had confidence building, uh, finding failures and defects. This is. So a, I think I chose uh, confidence building. That is because uh, if the if the objective is not met for mm. uh, uh, for that particular feature, if it is given and the objective is not met, and there are thousands of defects. Uh, in that particular module, then there is no point if uh, the fix is not given properly. But you will get so I think, uh, I think, uh, when you find the failure. You said no thousand of defects, mm -hmm. it is there. But at the end, then you need to know that there are these defects. So if you find mm -hmm. this, once you fix this, after yeah. fixing, you will get the confidence. But for to get this confidence, you need to find this defect because here also, like if development team, they don't find anything. They are confident. That's why they are giving it right here. So even yeah. you, you have a confident, but if you have not gone through a process which finds the defect, then uh, means uh, if you compare these two things, then you need to find the defect. So with that, you will get the confidence. Okay. Okay. So maybe this was one of the uh, place where you went wrong. Yeah. So obviously, though it is written in the very first point that building confidence, yes, you have, you will build the confidence, but the confidence will come once the testing process is done. And then once you have the result of it, right, once you go through the result, then you see that, okay, we had these many defects. Now we only these many defects are there or we have fixed all the defects. Then you get the confidence and then this product is given to the customer. Okay. Okay. So finding failures and defects, we will discuss the point, what is the meaning of failure, in which scenario we use this term, and in which scenario we use the term uh, defects in our upcoming uh, slides. But as of now, finding failures and defects, and as I mentioned, this is the major or this is the best uh, objective. So sometimes they use these two words. Okay, Then evaluate the work product. So what does that mean? Just a minute. Just move on thing here. Okay. 
I just needed this one. Yeah. So we were at evaluate the work product. So what is the meaning of work product? First of all, we should know. So we should know what is the meaning of work product. So when you are in an organization, okay, so this is usually the process that you get the requirement from the customer, user requirement. Using this requirement, you fine tune those requirements based on your organization and what task you do. Okay. So when you do that, so in this stage, what you have worked on, you have worked on the requirement. So requirement is your work product. Okay. Okay. When you are in the global design, means I am trying to relate how we work and what is written in the ISTQB syllabus. Yeah. So when they use the word work product. Then you have the next phase like global design. So here, what will be prepared? Design documents will be prepared. So design document is your work product. And similarly, uh, first the high level design they will prepare and then they go for the low level design. So here, low level design is your work product. Once the implementation is done or during the implementation also, code is your work product. So I hope you got the meaning of work product. Work product means output of each stage. So in whichever stage you are in, whatever you deliver, that is referred as work product, not only specific to the development side, even in the testing side, if we see. So what you do in the testing is you write test cases. Test case is your work product. You generate the report. Report is your work product. You have the summary report at the end. Summary report is your work product. You write the scripts. Script is your work product. So work product means output of that particular stage. So I hope this definition is also clear. What is the meaning yeah. of work product? So we have to evaluate the work product. So you have already seen this diagram so that. Uh, I don't see any diagram in your screen. No, no, not now, but uh, okay. this diagram you have not seen. No, no, no. I mean, I don't see anything you're sharing. I just see a pop-up window which says uh, displays. Display settings only is visible. Sorry, let me just see how is that because I'm sharing my screen. Which screen it is sharing? Let me just check once because I was sharing it properly. This desktop tool. Still, you are not seeing a picture in my in your screen. No, no, I don't see. Now you see a picture. Yeah, now I see you dragged something. Yes. Okay, now I understood what is the problem. Then we do one thing. I just shift my thing to other screen. One minute. So for I need to stop the presentation. Okay, because I, I was thinking that you are able to see the screen and not now. No, not yet. Now you see, right? Still coming up for me. Yeah, it is something. Static here. testing is that the screen you're sharing? Static testing? Yes, yes, that is the screen I'm sharing, but I want to share also my slides, which is somehow not into that screen. Okay, and then start presenting. Yeah, now you see, right? Yes, actually, I was sharing from here only, but somehow you were not getting it. Now, let me see. Actually, I started from here only that you were able to see these diagrams when I was making no. Yes, yes, I was able to see that diagram. Okay, after that, so we were until here, so you, you were here, no, until here. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is the place I was in and... Uh, It is the picture, and this is the picture I was showing you. You didn't have a look into it anytime, no, till now. Yes. Yes. So this is where I was explaining that you have a user requirement. Then from user requirement, you get the system requirement. 
this is within your organization so they fine tune this requirement because this requirement is coming from customer and customer will have a lot of things into it so they extract the requirement which the development team needs or the other team needs so that those requirements will be there in your system requirement from there you have a global design detailed design and implementation so any of these stages you are working in you will have the output of these stages these outputs are referred as work product work products okay. <clears throat> and similarly, I have also explained you know, in the testing side, test reports are there, test cases are there, test scripts are there, summary report is there. Those are the work products. So these work products, we should evaluate. Okay, so any work product you have within your team, we should evaluate that. So this is what they are, uh, they uh, mentioned in the third number point. Okay, I got it. So I have no, now you got the third point also, right? What is the meaning of that? Evaluate yes. the work products. Okay. Next one is a normal one that ensuring that the requirements are met. So this is one part of the testing itself that uh, in the requirement stage, you will have all the requirements based on this, the coding will be done and based on the requirement, only test cases are written. So then using these test cases, what we do is we evaluate the code and then see that everything is meeting or not. So this is what is ensuring that the requirements are met. Next okay. one is a risk management exercise. So what happens before we start? Suppose this is our development cycle. So in the planning stage itself, what we do is we evaluate the risk. Okay, This is the place we evaluate the risk. And then to mitigate this risk or to reduce this risk, what I, we do is we also write test cases based on the risk we also write the test cases and during testing we execute these test cases to see that what what kind of risk uh, can we find or uh, come across during planning phase planning phase so you will have a product so it uh, is again context dependent what type of product you are using suppose you are using a website or suppose you are using an aviation uh, domain something okay or automotive domain so when you are in the website uh, thing the risk could be that if what if the lot of users will log in together okay okay that would be uh, the kind of like a server load how much it's will it be load. able to handle or not no testing okay. stress testing so you will plan that way so your planning will go in that direction whereas if you have automotive product or avionic project then there the risk could be with many things like what if the airbag does not open what if the braking system fails mm -hmm. so considering these things you will start your planning so it is again a context dependent stuff which product you are using based on that you will evaluate the risk okay so sometime most of the things are covered in your requirement itself but there are times that the requirement will not have everything in it so based on the product the company will have some uh, risk strategy so they they will go with that and then they have they will have some test cases also that or they will derive the requirement from these requirements only whatever requirement you have from these requirements, they will derive the risk related requirements mm -hmm. so that you can prioritize them first. They should not be misread because they are related to the risk. So they will take out these requirements and they will give them first priority. So that means throughout your cycle, they will get the first priority. For example, if you have to write the test cases, they will get the first priority. First, you will write test cases for them. If you want, if you go to the execution stage, first you will execute these test cases only. So that's how it is. So you get the requirement and that is how you manage the requirement that whatever risk was there in your system, you have given it one priority and now throughout your testing cycle, they are always considered first. Okay. Okay. So this is also one point that the risk management exercise then measuring and improving the quality. Okay. So once you actually measure and um, once you measure the quality, you know, after that only you get the confidence <clears throat> in the system. So measuring the quality means, so once you have a product, after that, once you execute your test cases, you get defects or you get yes. the failures. So then at the end, you log all these failures. And then once you get the metrics out of it, then you know that how many critical defects you still have in your system, how many major defects you have in the system or how many defects in total you have in the system. That way you will measure the quality of your product. And if a lot of defects are there, then you will not give it to the customer. Okay, because the, it has not met the quality, then you will improve the quality by fixing those defects. So once you see that the defects are reduced, all the minor defects are there, 
then with that defect you will communicate to the customer and you will deliver the product okay so that is how you measure and improve the quality next comply with the standards so apart from the requirements sometime as a, as an example if you are working for an automotive industry there are other standards also which you need to follow even if customer has given you these requirements but still we need to follow some other requirements like there is a requirement called iso 26262 okay this is an international standard which an uh, uh, tier 2 company has to follow if if they get this requirement along with that they should consider this as a requirement sometime customer itself will tell that okay these are our requirements along plus along with this these are some standards which you need to follow so these are the thing and how we know whether we have followed it or, or not through testing only so this is one of the objective of testing to see that we comply to the standards okay okay and the last point is preventing defects okay so how we prevent the defect i come up with this example again so as i mentioned that when you are in this stage the output will be requirement right if you don't perform any testing at this stage okay what type of testing you can perform static testing static testing means when you are not executing the code okay so okay. it will it is in a documented form so any document if you review that is a static testing okay so now here if you don't perform any review on it then what will happen all the mistakes which are there in it based on these requirement only global design will be prepared so all those mistakes will there will be there in the design document but if you review your document here and if you find all the mistakes what are you doing you are preventing the defect to go from this stage to this stage okay so this is how a testing helps us in preventing the defect so preventing the defect means going from one stage to the other stage similarly if you perform testing here then if you find all the defects in the design stage then these defects will not be introduced into the implementation stage they will be find here and then you will do the implementation based on the correct document so this is also one of okay. the major objective of testing okay so sometime maybe in the last question paper you got this as one of your option uh, and then in the next exam maybe you will get this as one of your option and that time you have to mark this as your right answer what if we have both both of them if you Finding have both and defect and preventing uh, then this will take the priority because okay. preventing defect also how will you prevent the defect again by, by finding the them. failures only so right. that's how we have to relate so this will always have a first priority okay 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 but uh, whatever i have seen till now they do not uh, go in this extent also that they provide these both things together okay but even if they give then then this is the answer that you have to find the defects okay so these are the points here <clears throat> and what if if there is a defect in your software then it may cause a lot of problem for the company for an example loss of money loss of time loss of business reputations injury or death till now i have never seen any question very long back i saw i saw one question that uh, which one of this is a, a problem with the software is not right then they gave four options and question was quite easy so out of this only one you have to consider so there the injury and death was the option so if you ask how that means uh, i mean i can also just tell you how loss of money for an example you are performing testing at this stage okay but you didn't find the mistake there was a mistake at this stage but which you didn't find then what happened this mistake is introduced here because you could not prevent the mistake right then it is introduced here no one found here then finally you introduce that uh, defect here then during the testing time it was found for an example then what you need to do now you have to change this document you have to change these two document and you have to change this document because this was the source of all these problems right so now see the effort right. three four places you have to change if you miss the defect at your stage then lot of people will get involved lot of time will be involved here just imagine a scenario when the user is using it and they find the mistake then what will be the process right so that is how it is a time consuming process if there is a bug in the software so loss loss of money loss of time <clears throat> and if user finds it out then it is a reputation uh, thing also 
Mm. And as I gave you an example, like if you are working for automotive industry or any other product where, where we have a risk of uh, injury or death, and if uh, product is not good at this happens, then again it's also it affects the reputation, money, time, everything. Okay. So these okay. are the four points here: loss of money, loss of time, business reputation, and injury or death. <clears throat> So we saw that what uh, what is testing, what are the objectives of testing, what if the objectives are not met, then uh, it will result in loss of money and all those stuff. Now we are seeing why we have these defects in our system, why we introduce defect in our system, because human beings are fallible, means they are tend to do mistakes, okay, knowingly, unknowingly, they will make the mistakes here. There are other reasons that sometimes we work under high pressure. And that time we may oversee certain things which will result in a defect. Sometime, even if we have time, everything, but the system which we are working on is very, very complex or very first time we are working on something, then we are not aware of multiple uh, things and that also results in a defect. So first thing is that human beings are fallible. They tend to do mistakes. Sometimes they work under pressure. And sometimes the technology itself is too complex that uh, we miss certain points in them. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So this is the cause of your defect. Now they uh, use some terminologies like error, defect, and failure. Did you get any question from this topic? In your recent exam? Error, defect, and failure. No. No. So sometimes this is also an important topic where you can get, you can expect some question. Okay. So what is error first of all? So as I was mentioning that, suppose you have a requirement, you are in the requirement stage. Okay. <clears throat> now here is a requirement engineer who will, who will be writing the document. So they give their work product. So work product is nothing but a document as of now. Yes. After that, what will happen? Uh, that. The requirement engineer suppose made some mistake. He wanted to write uh, 10 instead of write just an example. He wrote 100. Okay. So if he finds this mistake in his work product here itself, work product means he has delivered it. He has delivered it to the next stage for maybe for review or something. Okay. But before that, only if he finds it out, nothing, no problem. Okay. But now what he did, he has written this and he has told that, okay, my work is done. Now this, this problem is there, right? In his work product, this is called as error. He made an error already. Okay. Is this clear? What is error? Yeah. Now it is there in the work product. No one knows about it, but there is a possibility. It may go to the next stage where a reviewer will review this document again, this review. And then if he finds it out here that, okay, this is hundred. If the reviewer finds it out, then it is called as defect. Mm -hmm. This was error when no one knows, but the thing is there in it. And here, this is the stage where someone has found it. The, once they find what they will do, they will again tell it to the author and they will fix it. So here it is fixed. Okay. Yeah. There is another possibility now that the reviewer could not find. Okay. Now it okay. went to the next day. So until here, it was in the document only. Until here also, it was in the document only. So this defect you had. Now the reviewer also missed it. Now it went to the testing team or in very worst case to the user. Okay. okay. Now they found this mistake at this point. This is known as failure. Okay. So usually we can say that once you are using a product and if you find a mistake in it, that is a failure from, especially from the ISTQB point of view. In our organization, we can use these uh, terms interchangeably. Sometimes when a tester is finding data, we found an error, we found a bug, right? We use such words, yeah. but in the, from the ISTQB terminologies, they have divided into this format. So we have to remember this from the exam point of view. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then once they find here again, obviously it will go to this stage and then they have to fix it. So now this okay. concept is clear, right? That when, in which stage we say it as an error, in which stage we say it is a defect and in which stage we say it is a 
failure. I was thinking failure in the sense the complete system itself going down. Uh, so is that understanding also correct? Like that understanding maybe is like... also correct. But even if you have one failure, even if your not system is completely going down. But for example, you have a calculator, just a simple example. Okay, your calculator is working fine. Only the addition option is not working there. So you, if you mm -hmm. do six plus four, then suppose it is giving you eleven. Only for this combination, still it is a failure because you are using a product and you are getting this. Mm -hmm. It's not necessary that your product itself is not turning on. So that is also a failure, obviously. That so the severity will increase. That here it is more severe. It is little bit less severe compared to this, but. Everything yeah. is in the category of fault. Sorry, failure. Okay. Okay. Now, so this is clear, right? These three stages. Yes. Okay. Now, one another concept for what is the cause of the failure? Why we had this failure? The cause of the failure is the defect, because you had this defect here, right? Which is was missed, or if you just find means it is defect, but because this defect was there, that's why you had this failure. So the cause of the failure is the defect. The cause of the defect is a error. Error. Okay. So this is also yes. one one concept which you need to know. One is what is error, what is defect, what is failure. Then you need to know what is the cause of the failure, what is the cause of the defect. Cause of the failure is defect. Cause of the defect is error. Okay. Okay. So because I have seen question from this part, the second part. So this normally people miss who read when they are I reading. Think I think I did have this question cause of failure. Okay. I think I made a mistake there, yeah. Yeah, so that's what I was telling you. This is also, uh, that's why I was a little bit surprised that you didn't get any question from this topic because usually we get a question. It wasn't direct. It wasn't a direct scenario based okay, and they are, just, yeah. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now if we go through the PPT, then an error, a mistake made by the human. I think now you can relate with the block diagrams, right? So it's the mistake made by the human. Defect, the result of an error. So until you find it, you cannot say no defect. It is still there. It is a mistake is made by the human. If no one is finding it, then it is fine, right? It is not a defect also. It is not a failure if no one is able to find it out. But if someone okay. finds it out in the document and all, then it is a defect. Okay. And then... The system does not perform as expected. That means someone is using. So usually testers or users, they will use this term. That's why I am saying the tester is doing and they found the mistake uh, in the software, what it is. Then it is a failure. A user is using a product and they found this mistake in it. Then it is a failure. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so that's how it is. Uh, the system does not perform as expected. As expected means it could be a very small thing also. Yeah. Fine. So this is what the error, defect, and failure. So first causes we first cause we saw that the human being himself because they are developing the code and they made mistake because of three reasons. One is they may overlook just by as because they are human being, and other thing is because of high pressure or highly complex system. Okay, three things. There are other causes yes, of failure. I, I got question. I got question here in this one. Okay. Uh, so the software behavior will change uh, based on a uh, hardware settings or something. I I think I chose no or some. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So here they are telling is that yeah because of hardware also you can have the cause of the failure. For example, uh, very easy example if I give you that when you go in a flight right that time they tell you to turn off your mobile phones or go into the aeroplane mode right. Why oh, yeah. they do this? Because the hardware when the hardware works right there so there will be an electromagnetic uh, wave generated from it. Okay. So sometimes what happens, the electromagnetic wave, because a lot of people are in the flight and once the electromagnetic wave generates from here, it may interfere the, the electromagnetic uh, field of the flight. And then the signal, whatever signal they want to uh, re, uh, get, they may not get that signal because sometimes you have analog signals also. So analog signals will have noise in it. Digital signal is yeah. fine. Digital signal will always go like this, but the analog signal cannot have the single line. So they will be going like this, but the, when there is an interference, there is a possibility more noise will introduce into it. So this will cause right. the failure in your entire product. 
okay so that is the one reason so that is what electromagnetic fields uh, can be one of the cause of your failure the radiations and sometimes the pollution for example if you have designed a product and you have suppose a sensor here okay but your design is in a way that this sensor is always exposed to outside world then what will happen mm -hmm. because of dust particles pollution there will be another layer on it and then this will not work after some time okay there is a possibility so pollution also can uh, play play a role in uh, as a cause of a failure so radiation electromagnetic fields pollution okay mm -hmm. So this is other cause of the failure. So now when we go to the next topic, that is static versus dynamic testing. So just if you have to remember, then it's very simple that static testing means you are testing the documents. Okay. So I always take this one because it is always easy for people to understand because when you're in the requirement stage, you only have the requirement as your work product. When you need these designs, there's the only design document. So you cannot, that there is no code involved here, right? So, right? so these all are documents only. So that's why I have mentioned these all are static testing stages completely until here. Only the last is where you have the code. Here also you can perform static testing as well as dynamic testing. But from here, dynamic testing can start. But until here, you only have the things in documented form. So that's why you only perform static testing. So this is one point here. Okay, and then execution of the software under test. So dynamic testing means when you can execute your code. Okay, and here when you are yes. not able to execute your code. So this is the main difference between static testing and dynamic testing. Static testing, you are not executing the code and finding the defects, especially in the documents, every time in the document only. And uh, the other one dynamic testing is that you are executing your code. So that is a dynamic testing. The code is running. So running is nothing but a dynamic. Here the document will be there you know, in static format. You will be just reading the document. But here the software will be running and you will be observing it. Yeah. Okay. Now the next very important point. So both are looking for defects. One of the major point where people go wrong is this point. So whether you are doing a static testing or you are doing a dynamic testing, your objective is to find defects only. Mm -hmm. okay. But you may find different type of defects. Okay. Yeah. You may not find same similar defects, but you the objective is same. You have to find the defect, but you may get different type of defects. So that is uh, how it is. So this line you have to remember that both static testing and dynamic testing look for the defect. The defect could be of different nature. Okay. Not same type of defect. So this means because why I'm telling the answer will be uh, the objective is to find same type of defects. The objective is to find defect. The objective is to find defect. And uh, but uh, the objective is to find different type of defects. Then different type of defects would be your answer. Okay. okay because just to confuse, they will give three, four lines with only one word changed in that. But you should be clear that they both will find the defect, but the defect will be of different type. Okay. So maybe you can expect this question also in exam. <clears throat> Again, uh, as I was mentioning that you do whichever type of testing, your objective is not going to change. Okay. Your objective yeah. is to still build confidence to reduce the risk of operational failure. Operational problem is when someone is using it like user, when user is using it, you don't want to see the failure there. So, that is what they want to reduce. Okay, reduce the risk of optional problem. Then improve software quality. So that's the point. Like you find a defect, then once the defect is fixed, that shows that the quality of your software is improved. And both, both of them can do this. Even dynamic testing as well as static testing. Okay, both will contribute here. Okay. Next one. Again, whether dynamic testing or static testing meet the contractual requirements contractual requirements again same like when you when uh, the oems are there right or the customers are there and when we are working here at this stage so initially there will be a contract maybe they will give you the requirement they will say that you have to fulfill all the requirement or many other stuff like you have to also fulfill the standards all these things mm -hmm. so this is will come with the contract so even one of the objective of testing is to meet the contractual requirements so if Sometimes they will give you three, four options and one of the options will be this. So 
sometimes with the what what is what testing has to do with the contract okay so that time we we skip this one but this is also one of the objective any legal requirements as i told no standard so standard could be an international standard or the standard can come from the government authorities also so that will if it is coming from government authorities it is a legal requirement okay and this i told you no meeting industry specific standard so this is the standard industry specific standard or the standard from the governments okay but we need to keep this mind that these all are testing part of testing only because when we do normal testing in our level we never uh, concentrate or we never do these type of things but it can be covered okay so this is what uh, we need to know those three points also and apart from this this one testing and quality so how testing is related to the quality i have mentioned multiple times previously also that first you find the defect so testers will find the defect after that what we do defects are fixed okay yeah. so developer will fix the defect after that tester will confirm that the defect is fixed and that way the software will have the fewer defects and this will improve the quality okay. yeah yeah okay and this is what they have mentioned the same thing here again uh, in the long term like again the develop the testers will find the defect then the development in the development team they will analyze the defect why they will analyze the defect so that they can got the get the root cause of the defect once yeah. they get the root cause uh, what can happen is like uh, in one release uh, you had suppose 50 defects you had you analyzed all the defects okay and you got the root cause also so for all the 50 you got the root cause finally what manager will do is manager will look into this root cause they will see that what is the major root cause here means because of which root cause we have lot of defect then they will try to introduce a process that we don't have these root cause in our product they will try to do some process improvement which is written here that so that these type of defects can be reduced for example uh, people may say that in the root cause that i was not aware of these things Yeah. they can plan a training for the team that okay let's have team trained in this particular stuff so so that the in future these type of defects are reduced or uh, yeah so this is how it is and that okay. way also in future the system will have uh, fewer defects so this is lesson learned so once everything is over then you will have a lesson learned probably in every organization we will have this retrospective meeting or lesson learned so there we will discuss and based on that we see that if something can be improved in our process okay so this is the thing and another important topic sometimes question comes sometimes question does not come from this topic there is a term called quality assurance so this is to build the quality and there is a term quality control that is to check the quality so here they will tell that like 80 more than 85 percentage the coverage should be there so this is in the high level they will say but to cover this 85 percent is what you need to do you need to do testing right testing is part of quality control yeah so you will have normally qa team in your team you know quality assurance team so they will make some goals that okay these many test cases should be there these many defects should be there in your product more than this should not be there i mean to say so the testing team will ensure that these things we are finding it out okay and uh, so when you have a organization the organization will have their policies these policies will come under quality assurance so this is kind of a documentation but to meet this quality goals you have another stage called quality control where you do the testing is it clear so quality assurance you make all the documents all the policy process whatever we will have no process those things will be prepared in the quality assurance stage whereas to meet these qualities you have a quality control stage where you do the testing so this is what it is written there to meet the product quality so you will have specification to meet the quality you have quality assurance which will tell you what you need to do so that you will meet this and what you need to do you have to do it in quality control stage so it is clear right this difference between this one and this one yeah it's kind of a policy it's kinds of a action you have to perform action here now <clears throat> sometimes there is a question how much testing is enough that's what they will ask sometimes it again depends upon the testing so for to for this how much testing is enough 
the testing team will provide the information first the testing team will provide information to the stakeholders stakeholders means could be manager could be tech lead could be customer also sometime so uh, like test manager tech leads after testing these informations will be provided like what all things how many requirements we have met how many requirements are untested how many de uh, defects we found how many defects are not fixed fixed or not fixed all this information will be provided to the manager or the lead or the customer based on this information that how many defects we have or how much testing we did they will evaluate the risk and they will also see that available time and based on that they will tell that whether we have to perform further testing or we should stop our testing this is clear this point yeah yeah, yeah. so so normal activity in an organization and the next point is that from from far view or if someone else sees the testing they see that testing is nothing but just running the test cases <clears throat> mm. means we just do testing means that means we are just running our test cases or performing some manual evaluation but testing is not restricted only till here testing has lot of other things like testing has its own planning activity a control activity in during the planning stage what we have first we have the requirement from the we analyze this requirement after analyzing this requirement we write the test cases after writing the test case we sometime write test scripts also like in case of automation uh, if there is no automation then we skip this and go to the next stage then we do the execution after execution is done then we make the summary report right so there is lot of things going on in testing it is not only one stage there where you are just executing the code so execution of the test case is only one part of the testing but it's not whole testing that is what we have and we also do the review the requirement comes we perform the review on it right mm -hmm. this is what is written here that we do lot of things here it is not only about running our test cases so this is just a misconception that testing means running test cases whereas we do lot of other stuffs in it okay okay and uh, choosing test conditions you have given one uh, yes. what kind of test conditions uh, do we talk here we will we will cover this uh, in the test analysis process we have different processes right that's yeah, why yeah. I just skip here i will tell you what is the meaning of test condition because i will give you a complete overview to get this points okay yeah yeah so now if you see here general objectives of testing okay so if we see here you see that finding defect now here they have yeah. made as a first point okay and again the other point is there that the second point is preventing defect if you get all of these things this gets first priority this gets second priority and out of this you can consider as third priority and fourth one this one i will tell you now how so finding defects once you find the defect you can prevent the defect then you have to provide this information to the stakeholders for making decision so once they decide then they will say that okay how much confidence they have in the system after going through all of your things if they say that we don't have confidence then again testing will start so first they will make the decision at this point and if there is okay. they get a good confidence then it will go so first you will find the defect by doing this actually you prevent the defect even if you don't prevent the def uh, means if you prevent the defect even if defects are there if you have found that out then you can provide it as a information after evaluating your information they will tell that whether we have to it is of a good quality or not so whether we have good confidence in it or not okay so that okay. is hierarchy we can follow and out of these four if any one you get in your exam then they will have the first priority means you consider them as a first priority for you okay okay <clears throat> next one different view points on objective so i told that these are the generic objective whichever level of testing you are in what you will do you will definitely find that defect you want to gain the confidence in that level you want to provide information to the stakeholder and you want to prevent the defect from going from one stage to the other stage so these are right. the generic objectives but if you are in some test levels like if you are doing a component testing those four things are common they are generic here but apart from this you will have some other objectives also similarly at acceptance level 
you will have four objectives what is mentioned there plus some more objectives which is specific to this level now let's see when you are in the component testing because this is the very first level of testing which is performed by the testing team or by the in the testing uh, cycle to find and fix as many defects as possible okay so here our objective is to find as many problem as possible but when you do the acceptance testing so component testing happens here then you have the integration testing then you have the system level testing and then you have the acceptance testing at all these yes. level your objective is to find the defect but not here if you find defect here it is very bad because it is like someone wants to accept certain thing and there you are finding the defect here the objective mm -hmm. is that confirm that system meets the requirement here their objective is to see that we have met all the requirements okay so here the objective yes. itself is changing when you are in the operational testing you check here the reliability of the system availability of the system like installation uh, uninstallation whether those things are working or not so again the objective is changing here when you are in the maintenance testing what you see that is that suppose there is a code and now you want to change something in this code if you change this part of the code how much it is affected how much it is affecting your code this is what you will test in the maintenance testing okay so impact impact of the change you will test here yeah so this is how when you are at different level of testing your objective may you may have to adjust your objective based on that level okay apart from okay. the general... i had got question here in this slide two questions i had got Mm -hmm. uh, one is objective of uh, acceptance testing and the other one objective of maintenance. Uh, it was a scenario based for impact analysis. Okay. So acceptance testing, then you have to remember that the objective is not to find defects. Okay. You have to see that the system yeah. meets the requirement and maintenance testing means you have to see the impacts, especially the regression testing concept will come into picture. I don't know if you have this word regression testing in that same scenario. Yeah. Uh, but here you have to see that ensure that no defects have been introduced into the system. Okay. You remember the option if it is matching somehow here with or in but I remember uh, confirms the system meets requirement. That was a direct one which I had chosen for uh, acceptance testing. But uh, maintenance testing, it was like uh, they told if we try to upgrade the version or something to something else. Uh -huh. So. Uh, what do you think? I clearly don't remember because it was a little long time back. Anyway, this maintenance testing again comes from second chapter also this topic. Actually, this question what you got is from the second chapter. But you said that you got 100% in that, right? Second like, chapter. <clears throat> yes, I got 100% in that. That means then you have marked it rightly, whatever you have marked. Mm -hmm. Because uh, this this is just in the first chapter we are just uh, we are just uh, un understanding that they both have different objective, but what is their objective is covered in chapter number two. Yes. Okay. So you have marked it anyways correctly only. Okay. Now going to the next part again one of the important question I hope you have got one question also dynamic testing and debugging. I'm not sure. Dynamic testing and debugging. Yes, there was one question. Yeah. Okay. So here also in the concept wise, if you just know this much, it is enough that first of all, what you need to know is dynamic testing is done by the te uh, tester. Debugging is done by the developer. Okay. This is one of the major difference. Sometimes question comes like this. Sometimes they ask the definition. So dynamic testing, what you do is you find the failure. Okay. So in a testing team, you find the failure, then it goes to the development team. In the development team, the debugging activity will start. What debugging activity will consist of? During the debugging activity, you find the cause of the failure. You find the root cause in the debugging. Okay. Then you analyze, actually it should be other way around. You analyze the defect and find the root cause. Then you fix the defect. So this is the definition of debugging. In the debugging, we analyze the defect, then we find the root cause, and then we fix the defect. We analyze the defect, we fix the root cause, and then we fix the defect. These are the three activity happens in debugging stage. Once you okay. fix the defect, you give it back to the testing team, and testing team will retest it. 
to see that if defect mm -hmm. exists or not. So this is the complete scenario of dynamic testing and debugging. Yeah, there was a question like, uh, who will do dynamic testing and who does the debugging? Yeah, so direct question was. Correct. So you might have got this one right, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is one question. Maybe when you are writing for the second time, no, they may ask you the definition of debugging. So that time you have to remember that, yeah, that in the debugging stage, we do analysis, then we do the um, root cause, we, we do the analysis, we find the root cause and then we fix the defect. So these three activities happens in the debugging stage. What they do, no, <laughs> finding defect. So what they do, they take one of these activity here and bring one of from here to here, like that. They do some crisscross here in the four options, but then you have mm -hmm. to be very careful that the uh, dynamic testing is finding failure and confirming the fix. That's it. Finding the okay. failure, confirming the fix. Rest all comes in the debugging stage. Okay, fine. Okay, so you can expect this question maybe next time. That's what I see oh. because you already got this one. Right? If you would have got this question, then you can expect this one. These are the two type of question they ask. That's it. Okay. Now coming to seven principles of testing. Uh, if you need a break in between, no, just let me know. And uh, once I see that I am tired, I will also let you know that uh, we can go. Okay, for sure. Okay, not a problem. Anyway, we both are there, no, so we can uh, adjust it according to our needs. Okay. Yeah, maybe I'll directly take a break by 11 so that I can go have my breakfast. Oh, you didn't have breakfast? Okay. What is the time now? I don't see it. It's 10.57. 53. Okay, then we do one thing. We cover this uh, principle of testing. Mm -hmm. Then we take a break because this is one topic and then here after the completely different topic starts. So let's finish this before we, we go to the next one. And then we take break oh. after this. Okay. So here... Testing shows the presence of defect. Okay, this is one of the principles. Testing shows the presence of defect. So what we need to know here is that suppose you have a software and you do a testing. Okay, suppose in this software you had, you don't know how many bugs are there. As a tester, you don't know, but uh, developer has already made mistake. No, these are already available. Just an example. They have five bugs here. Okay. During the testing activity as a tester, you found three bugs in it. Can you confirm that? Can you say now that, okay, there is no defect in the software? No, right? No, there are still two defects are there in the software. Yeah. So even if you test and you find the bugs, you are only showing the presence of the defect. But you cannot make a statement that there is no defect in the software. Okay, so that is the first principle that testing shows the presence of defect. By doing this, what you do is you reduce the probability of finding defects. Here, if suppose you test here, if the user use this one, the probability of finding defect by user is high right here. And the probability of finding defect is low here because here only two defects yeah. are there. Yes. This is another concept. Probability of finding defect reduces when uh, you have the testing activity. Okay. So okay. testing yeah. shows the presence of defect, not their absence. Okay. Not their absence. This is also important sentence here. Testing shows the presence of defect, not their absence. Next one, exhaustive testing is impossible. So again, it is a context de dependent and from the exam point of view, what is important? Sometimes they will only give you option until here, exhaustive testing. Then this is not the principle. Exhaustive testing is impossible is a principle. This should be there, this part. Sometimes they will ask which of these are not the principle of testing. They will give you all the options here, four options. Suppose they give you all these four options, but second option, they give you only the exhaustive testing. Mm -hmm. That time you think, because you always remember this, then you will think that no, all of these are options, options, what to do. And you will be very confident that exhaustive testing is one of the options. You will mark something else here that, okay, this, mm -hmm. is, this is what happens I have seen. So exhaustive testing is impossible is a principle of how they are different. Exhaustive testing and exhaustive testing is impossible. Suppose you have a requirement where it tells it takes a single digit positive number. 
right? Single digit positive number. So zero to nine is a single digit positive number. Yeah. Now, exhaustive testing means that you will test all the values here. Everything you will take all the values from here to here means zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, everything, and then from here also you will take all the values. Mm -hmm. But what testing tells what principle tells you don't have to do like this. What you can do is you can take one value from here and one value from here. So you take only four values in one case, or you can take, if you want more regressive testing, you can take another value from here and here, and then you conclude your testing. So you can take either four points, six points, uh, instead of considering all infinite number of points. It is not possible, right, in testing that you test all the points and see that, yeah, everywhere it is fine, working fine. So if you yeah. do infinite type of testing, that is exhaustive testing. Exhaustive testing is impossible means this is not possible. We should go with some techniques like boundary value analysis, something so that we can reduce our time. So this is the difference between these two statements, exhaustive testing and exhaustive testing is impossible. So exhaustive testing is impossible is the principle. This point is also clear, right? Yeah. Okay, early testing. I hope this is anyways clear that if we have these stages, it should not be like that. We don't do any testing here and finally we do testing here. And I gave you the consequence of it that if you test here, then if the mistake was here or here, then you have to change all the documents. So that's the reason we should start testing as early as possible. So if we are at this stage, we cannot do dynamic testing, at least perform the static testing. So with static testing, we can introduce early testing. This is also a very important concept that static testing will help you to do early testing. Dyna with dynamic testing, you cannot achieve that because for dynamic testing, the code should be available, right? Dynamic yes. testing will start here. So static testing will help you to do the early testing. This is also one of the important point from the exam point of view. Okay. Okay. So this is early testing. There is also a very popular graph. Okay. That, that is a... Uh, cost versus time graph. So normally you will have a requirement in the first stage, then you will have a design document, then you will have your internal testing, and then you give it to the user, right? This is how it is. And suppose this is the cost increasing in this direction. So until and this is how it increases the cost. So if you're in the requirement, if you find the cost will be less. Design little bit, it will increase because you have to change two stages now. When you're in testing, it will further increase because you have to change all these things. When you are yes. when the user finds it is very, very high, you have to change everything here. This is a cost versus time graph for the early testing. Okay. Oh. Okay. okay. Defect clustering. This also I have seen a question from and a scenario based question. We will also solve one of the scenario based question on defect clustering. So defect clustering means what? Sometime you will have a module where lots of defects are there. Mm. Okay. Some And we may neglect these type of modules because sometimes we see that this is a small module. Suppose you have two modules. One module is very big module and one module is very small module. So sometimes we think that let's complete the big module first and then with the anyway this is a small module less test cases we will complete this at the end but we should not evaluate in that way we should see the risk with the feature suppose this feature is not interacting with any other feature but this is a small module but it is interacting with a lot of other features and if you have a bug in this not only this feature is impacted all other features are also impacted right right yeah. So that is how we should evaluate that. We should think that the defect could be clustered in a small area also. This, this we should keep in mind. So this is what is a defect clustering uh, mean here that a small, the defect can gather in one area, one focus area, it could be gathered. Then uh, we should start testing with that. This is clear. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This is, this is just like gathering of the uh, defect in one place. One module, okay. Module or something like that. Yeah. There was one question for this pesticide paradox: running the same test cases over and over will not find uh, new defects. Yes. 
<coughs> so this is how it is. So if you have a defect here, and if you have actually these two are very important because sometimes people do not understand this concept just with the name, right? It is not clear. These with name somehow it is clear, but here again they they play they divide this and this part. So again, even if you are not in detail, you know this concept, then you will mark it wrong again. Yeah. So that's how yeah. they try to play. So this is what is the concept here. Suppose you have four defects, you have one script test case, you ran it for the first time. That time, suppose mm -hmm. you found three defects. So you still have one defect in the software, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you run it for the second time, suppose this defect was missed, we could not found. If you run the same script for the second time, third time, fourth time, can we find the defects? No. Mm -hmm. Until, unless we update our test case. Yeah. If we don't update our test case, then this is a problem, especially a problem in case of a regression testing, where you want to test, run the scripts again and again. And in some time, after some time, if you do are not finding defect, then we should consider a point that we should update our test case. If you run for three times, four times, and you're finding zero defects, then there is no point in running these test cases, right? Then it should be if we can update our test case and then they can find a new defect. The same test case running again and again will not give you or not find, with that you will not find any new defects. This is also clear, right? This, uh, I think you yeah. Again, yes. testing is context dependent. So when we say context dependent, I already gave you an example. If you test a website, you test a mobile phone, you test an automotive product, any of these mm -hmm. things. Your approach is going to be different. You are not, you cannot apply the same process for all of these three things. Here, the objective is you want to achieve different objectives. Mobile phone, you want to achieve different objectives. And in automotive domain, you want to achieve different objectives. So that's why, uh, means for an example, website, you want to achieve that the load condition, the stress condition. Here, you might be, you want to achieve the, like the reliability condition. Here, you might be like performance. So your mm -hmm. objectives are different. So when you have different objective, how can you have a same type of testing, right? So testing is always a context dependent. Yeah. And the last one is also similar to the first point. Absence of error is a fallacy. That means it is a mistaken belief that there is no error in the software. That's what I said. Well, after the testing is done, if we don't find mistake or if we find mistake, we cannot say that only these many mistakes are there in the project. Okay. There is a chance that because of hardware connection, uh, hardware issues, or due to the environment, the system may go wrong. Something may go wrong in the system, right? So that's why error of absence of error, there is no error in the system, is a fallacy statement. Okay. So these are the seven principles of testing. Any doubts here in the seven principle or anything where you wanted to know something more, which I didn't explain? Uh, no, I'm here with this concept. Yeah. Okay. Then, uh, then we take a break of how much, how many minutes? Because you want to go for breakfast, so. Yeah, fifteen minutes would be fine for me. Okay, seven, eleven, fifteen. Then we are back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Kiran. Then fine. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye. I'll be connected here. Yeah, I'm too.
Uh, yeah, hi, Ajita, back. Okay, I'm also here. Then we can move to the next topic. Until here, it is clear, right? And uh, the way we are going, it is fine with you, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm satisfied with the way we are going. Okay, then it is uh, okay. Uh, hmm. So now from here, the second part of this chapter will start, which means like, Previous one, we took one hour, right? So similar to this, it will also take another one hour for us. Now we have uh, some of the main activities here. Uh, actually, we have seven activities. So this is uh, analysis and design. This we can consider as two activities, okay? So it starts with planning. Anything we do, we, it always starts with planning. Then comes the monitoring and control stage, test analysis and design test implementation, test execution, and test completion. And again, uh, it is not necessary that this should be the order. Sometimes they also mix it. For example, here you see, you know, here we have two stages as one stage. Similarly, you, sometimes this fourth and fifth stages, stages are combined together, means overlap. So we can also have an overlap here, right? Maybe in your in your organization also you will not have these separate steps like this. So sometimes these these steps itself is all combined, all three steps: test analysis, design, and implementation. They make it as one step stage only. So it again it is a context dependent. How which stages you want, which all stages you want to combine, totally depends upon your project, product, and company. But ISTQB has defined it into these seven parts. Planning, monitoring and control, analysis, design, implementation, execution, and completion. I have seen once or once, I think, you know, some of the paper I have seen that um, they they provide this order like this. They will give the order, okay, mm -hmm. uh, question, and then they will tell you which is the correct order. So that time we should know it in this order only, sequential order only we should know. So I mean, you, are, you might have understood, they will just uh, jumbled up these things. First completion they will do or in between completion, then one place they will change and then next option they will make. But then you should know properly that planning, monitoring, analysis, design, implementation, execution, and completion. That is the flow. Anyway, you will, by end of the lecture, you will be remembering that properly. Okay. Planning and monitoring and control. This is part of fifth chapter. Okay. Okay. We will cover it there. <clears throat> As of now, we just have to know that that in the planning stage, the objective is set. So we set the objective in the planning stage. Through monitoring and control, we try to see that whether we are achieving this objective or not. Okay, so this is the major difference here. And this is the major activity also that in the planning stage, we define the objective. And through monitoring and control, we see that whether we are achieving that objective or not. More than this, we will see in chapter number five. Okay, not now. So let's make it simple. Now we go to the analysis and design stage. So for this, what I want is, uh, before we go to this stage, we should understand that, that normally what, how we have, suppose this is the start of your project and this is the end of your project, right? So before starting the project or, uh, just before that, you have the planning stage. So planning stage we have kept out of our normal activity. Okay, so this is done in the starting. Now, after that, as the project unfolds, you have the test analysis stage. Then, once your analysis is done, you go for the test design stage. Once test design is done, you go for the test implementation stage. And finally, you execute the test case and then you release the product. So this is the procedure. I needed a very little bit. Yes. Okay. Now there is a concept. First, what will happen? You will get the requirement 
right? So this is the major step. The requirement will be given to the developer. So they will start their development activity, whatever is needed. So we are not focusing on that area. This requirement is also given to the tester, right? This is how it happens, right? The same requirement is given to the developer and to the tester. Yeah, based now, on that, we will write the test cases. Yes. <clears throat> But we have jumped one step. Okay, so what we do first is that we analyze this requirement. So as a tester, you will perform review on this requirement. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. During the review, you will find the test conditions. This is a point where test conditions comes into picture. So this is the analysis stage. Okay. So this is the first step. So during review, we will find the test conditions. Oh, not only actually review. So what they will, yeah, in the review, they, you will you will find the test conditions. What actually we do in the review? We read the requirement. We see that it is testable or not, right? Right. It is not testable. And if we see that we cannot test it, we discuss it with the requirement engineer. Mm -hmm. And how are we going to test it? Not only that, that how are we going to test it? We also see that at which level it will be tested. It is not necessary that all the requirements which is there in the requirement document will be tested at the system level. Sometimes we say that it, this requirement can be tested at the component level. Okay. Okay. So for example, you have requirement one, requirement two, and suppose requirement three. So normally the requirement is that then there will be one attribute, right? Test level. Many companies it has, they will have one attribute test level. So they will mention this requirement can be tested at the software level. This requirement can be tested at the component level. This requirement can be tested at the software level again. Something like that. They will okay. have this. Okay. If you're, so this, how you will come to know? For this, a tester has to read this requirement. Mm -hmm. And they have to do the analysis on this requirement. While analyzing, while reviewing, they will find that what is missing, what is available, if everything is available, whether we can test it at system level or we can test it early at the component level, the requirement engineer will, uh, sorry, the, the tester will take these calls. Okay. Along with the requirement engineer. It's not like that everything we will put it to component level. So requirement engineer, we have to discuss, we have to tell him that, okay, this requirement, we can test it at component level. Then based on the understanding, we will fill this column that, okay, this is a component level. Okay, is this clear now? Yeah. So this yeah. is the first stage. So once you get the requirement, this is the first stage. And here, what you are doing actually, when you do this, you look for the testability of the requirement. Whether the requirement is testable, and if yes, at which level? Mm -hmm. So this, uh, this uh, line you have to remember, uh, okay, or maybe you have to understand instead of by hurting it that, as a tester, during the analysis stage, you analyze the requirement to find out the testable requirement. In the complete requirement, you have to find the testable requirements. You have to check for the testability. What do you check in the testability? First of all, whether you can test this requirement or not. If yes, you say yes, then at which level? This is clear, right? the yeah. overall concept if it is clear then we move further so what we have seen is now you get the requirement then there is one stage called analysis until here maybe we define it as analysis in this analysis you review the requirement that means you analyze the requirement and then you see that whether it is testable or not if it is testable then at which level we can test it Okay. But generally, whatever the requirements uh, we get, most of them will be testable at uh, component level testing only, right? Even the developers will also do a unit testing and then it goes to the next level. Um, sometime what happens, no, there is a requirement which we cannot test it from the, from the, uh, in the black box testing. Okay. okay. Uh, for example, like integration testing, there is a dependency on a different uh, team as well. So in that case, we cannot do a unit testing. No, that is another aspect here. So what you're telling is that at component level, integration level, and system level, these things are already defined. Okay. Mm -hmm. But 
apart from this this is already defined now at a system level suppose you are at the system level you want to do system level testing you got the requirement here okay now when you get the requirement here for this it is already defined right what they have to test but at your level when you get you see that some of this requirement can also be tested at the component level mm -hmm. for component testing the requirement the the input is component requirement component design design right. document is the input for component level this direct requirement is not the input for component level direct requirement is for you as a, as a system level software level you get the direct requirement but when you read some line here you see that this one i i cannot test as a black box testing because at software level you do a black box testing okay you see that through black box it is not possible i need some interface from the software then only this testing can be performed okay that time you move this requirement and you mark it as component level so apart from the requirement which they had they will have this as an additional requirement to test okay, okay. so uh, anyway i we do this at our uh, at our organization so here we get all the requirements then we evaluate and then we see that which of these requirements are at the component level because comp and then the component testing team puts a filter at the this requirement and whichever is applicable to them they write the test case for that and we write we put a filter for software test and we write the requirement for system testing okay 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 mm -hmm. so this is the first part the next part starts then first one is the analysis stage right then comes the design yeah. stage so what do you have until design you already have the testable requirements right you know that what you need to test which requirements you need to test for those test cases you will write the test case now mm -hmm. okay you can write uh, the test case here and not only we define the test conditions here we also prioritize them we give the priority because how the how in the design say someone will know that which test case they have to write first right so this priority they should get a priority also so from the analysis stage they get that priority okay these test cases they have to write first okay so when you are writing the test case what you also do is that you identify the data data means input data what all input you have to give to your system that also you have to identify na, in the test when you write the test case what right, what right. your signal should contain and you also identify the environment like where it will be running using which tool you will be running these things will be identified in the design stage means you write this you have to write the scripts also or something all these things right like uh, when you are in the design stage no suppose you are testing in a lab so you need a lab you need a pc you need some software all these things also will what all software you need all these things will be identified in the design stage itself what you need for testing this test case to test this test case you need one, one thing i told is the data you need and then where you will test it those the environment will be there no those, those are the environments you will list down here Exactly. Okay, and you will also provide the priority to your test cases. Okay, test case. Here you give priority to your test condition. Here you give priority to your test case. Okay. Okay. Now I will also go one more step here. Now you go to the implementation stage. That is the next stage. So until here, you what you had, you had the test case. So normally, you know, the we will write here high level test case. high level test case means we will not mention the signals and everything here because why it is in that way suppose you have product 1 you have product 2 and you have product 3 in your company okay they all are similar products okay then what you do is you write a very high level requirement that please turn on the system maybe there is a different way of turning on this system this system and this system but you will just mention one statement turn on the system so here this requirements this test case they will take to this one this one and this one and then they will fine tune in their requirement why it is happening is suppose you have written three lines here four lines here of your test case here you only have to add one line extra so okay. you are you are getting the efficiency right suppose this step is not there here also you have to write four lines here also you have to write four lines here also you have to write four lines of your test case but with the other approach what happens is you will write all the test case in a generic way either you have to only fill the data here you will just take this test cases as it is and you will only assign the data for an example 
set voltage to x volt this x will be replaced in all the test cases but you will use the complete structure as it is so you are reducing the time right three times you are reducing so this is called high level test case okay. and here it will be low level because you are assigning the things to it so at this place normally in the design stage we go for high level test case and here when we go to the implementation stage we go for test procedures test procedure will this is for the manual testing you will have everything in detail this is a low level test case or sometime we also write test scripts for writing test scripts you need everything right all the signals everything you need this is for automation yes. <clears throat> okay once you have the test procedure or test scripts you will go for execution and also yeah so here you only identified the data right here you have to prepare the data and here also you have to prepare the environment test environment your test environment also should be ready right for the implementation execution stage okay so here you will only identify it here you will prepare it okay in the implementation phase okay okay this is what we are going to see in all the slides now from here on but this is the overview if you understand all these points you see here right it is of i mean you can just remember it very easily i will just repeat it again because it is a very 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 big concept I means good concept important concept from the exam point of view definitely one or two question we get from this topic analysis design implementation everything yeah i have one uh, clarification here mm -hmm. when we say test cases or test strategy or test planning mm -hmm. so uh, you have only spoken about test cases uh, how about test strategy and planning uh, does it uh, fall in any of these uh, levels no test strategy and test planning <laughs> will come in chapter number 5 when we talk about planning stage okay so that will come under planning phase yes so when i okay. have drawn this diagram right i told this is the planning so here planning, you will yeah, have yeah. test strategy you will here you will have test planning whereas the test case you will have here all right okay, okay so this is part of fifth chapter this is part of first chapter fine hmm? okay so i will just go through it once so that it gives you a very good overview and then we will go with the points which is very which will become very simple for you then so first you get the requirement from the requirement you have to analyze that requirement once you analyze the requirement you develop the test conditions so test condition whenever you hear this word or wherever you see this word test condition it is always related to analysis stage test condition okay and you also prioritize your test conditions here so this is over so you check the testability of the requirement at which level they will be test we can test it so testability also is established here once you have the test condition you can write the high level test case so test case is a word associated with design mm -hmm. stage mm -hmm. not only you write the test case also you have to remember this two points are also very important identification of the data we do in the design stage identification of the environment is also done in the design stage whereas preparation of the data and preparation of the environment is done in the implementation stage okay okay then there are so test so there is one term test condition other term test case the next term test procedure or test scripts these two terms are associated with implementation stage okay okay and um, so this is it this is the overview of it now we will go through the uh, next points last concept i will explain here after that we will just go through the slides okay so now i gave you a very brief overview that you have test analysis stage analysis. So here test design, then test implementation, and finally execution. So this should be I. Okay, here what you get, you get test condition. Conditions. Okay, here you get test data. case. Test case. Okay, maybe I can write test data and yeah. test environment. Only identification. Yeah. Okay. Here you get test procedure. and you get test scripts these two words 
in the execution stage, no, you get a report. Yeah, summary report. Summary report or uh, in the normal code of society. Right? Now, when we talk about traceability, you are aware of the concept, right? Traceability. Uh, yes, whatever we execute uh, referring the test cases, that same requirement should be matching in the test uh, requirement also something similar, uh, yeah. bi-directional traceability, right? Bi that is what it is. Yeah. So suppose you have, so when you are, so uh, you have test basis the, for the requirement, no, they use the word test basis. Test basis. Okay. okay. So when you are in the test analysis stage, what you have, you have test conditions, right? Right. So you can make the traceability between test basis and test conditions only. Okay. When you are in the design stage, that time you can make the traceability between test basis, test condition, and test cases. Okay. Yeah. When you are in the uh, implementation stage, you can make the traceability between test basis, test conditions, test cases, and test procedure or test scripts. But you can okay. see that where it is ending. It is ending at test procedure and test script. And when you are in the execution stage, you can have the traceability between test basis, test condition, test cases, test procedure and test script, and results. Oops. Okay. This concept is clear now? Yes. So sometimes the question also comes from the traceability and that time, whichever step you are stopping, for example, you stop at test procedure or test script, that means it is execution. If, the, your, if your traceability stops at test cases, then it is test mm -hmm. design. Okay. So I hope this is also clear. Now we will go through the point and then I don't have to explain a lot of things here, okay? So here in the analysis stage, Until here, we have the test analysis activity. And from here to here, we have test design activity. This is for test analysis. I'm just writing it down and I will go through it also. And this is for test case, uh, sorry, test design stage. So reviewing of the test basis. Test basis means what? Requirement, okay. So in which stage we do the review of the requirement or analyze the requirement or identify the requirement in the analysis stage. Yeah. yeah. This is clear, right? Then evaluating the testability. So this term also is associated with? Test condition. Test condition and finally with test analysis. Yes. Okay. okay. Then identifying and prioritizing the test condition. So where we do this, identifying and prioritizing. Analysis. Analysis only. So we identify the test condition from which document? Uh, test basis. Test basis. Okay. So this is how it is. So that's how you can play with it now. So you okay. should know that test basis, testability, and test condition are the three terms related to test analysis. Test now analysis. they say they they can change this word. We are reviewing it, we are evaluating it, we are identifying it. Anything they can change your answer should not change if you have test basis there. Okay. Okay. So these three are the strong points which you have to remember for test analysis. Okay. Sorry. Now, when we go to the next stage, designing and prioritizing high level test case. I don't consider any of this. I only go with the test word cases. test cases. Then okay. here it is very important. Not only yeah. test data. If you have test data, you have to see what it is. It is identifying. Identify. Okay. And similarly, when you are test environment, it is just designing very okay. high level. Designing means just telling that what all things you need. Okay. Yeah. And also identifying the infrastructure. In test environment is nothing but infrastructure only, you know, which you need for running your test case. Yes. Sometimes they may ask identification of test lab. lab. Test lab is what? Mm -hmm. It is the infrastructure. That is how you have to relate. Okay. And that will come to design stage. Okay. Okay. Then test cases to test basis. So this is the traceability. Test cases to test basis means? Uh, test cases to test basis. Uh, from design to, uh, we have test conditions. From conditions, it will go to test basis. Yes, so this is how it is. I hope then all these points are clear, right? We can clearly differentiate yeah. between what comes to design yes. stage, what comes to analysis stage. Move to next point. Okay. So now we are here. 
so implementation stage another point i will uh, tell here that in the implementation stage what we do after implementation stage we have the execution stage so this is the implementation stage and this is the execution stage to execute our test case whatever is required is prepared during the test implementation stage okay if you want to here we do, we don't want to think anything we don't want to spend even single minute to do some other task here our main job is to just do execution and for that whatever is required to achieve this we do everything in the implementation stage so this concept is clear to you right that whatever yes. we need to run our test cases everything should be done here now from that point of view you have to think and then you will get all of these points for an example first one finalizing and prioritizing the test cases so first we prioritize the test case here in the in the design stage we design the test case but in the implementation stage we prioritize them yeah now next one we saw no previously test data environment infrastructure we have to build that yes now we don't have to identify we have to build it why because after that we are going to execute it right so it should be ready in ready state so that's why it should be built here then developing and prioritizing the test procedures i already told you know you will have test case so prioritization of test case you do here from test case you can develop test procedure or you can develop test scripts this is yes. for manual testing this is for automation testing so but all yeah. these things will come under implementation stage so that's what is here test procedure creating test shoot suits test suits means what it, sorry for automation it comes for automation uh, yeah. putting uh, a number of uh, test cases in one particular folder or a file directory yes so creating a group of test case yes yeah so that will come under uh, that is a test suite so you can have multiple groups in for your project first we will execute this group then we will execute this group something like that so create yes. test uh, yeah this is one creating the test suite from test procedure for efficiency so so that we can just take this group and then start executing now in which order they should be executed that is also decided in the implementation stage create test execution schedules which test case we have to run first which next which after that or which test suit should go first second and third all this as i told you we are not going to spend any time for doing all these things here we, our job is whatever we have decided just do that it is just for do okay, not to analyze execution stage so here only we are creating the test execution schedules okay okay and and the last one first i will go writing automated test scripts this i already told you right test scripts or test uh, procedure both of these ones preparing test harness test harness means anyway i will cover this in more detail in chapter number 2 test harness if you have heard the word driver and stubs test driver and, yeah so these there are was one the, question in in this one steps the stub and drivers there was one question okay so this we will cover in chapter number 2 so these steps stubs and drivers are also prepared during the implementation stage only okay okay what they are we will see in chapter number 2 when we go but now this points are clear right all the points are clear here yes yeah so would you like to go through it once just to see if anything you need So if you read any of these words you can clearly identify you know this is for test implementation only yes now when you go for execution so as i mentioned here you are only going to execute the test case so once we execute the test case what happens first we have to run the we test get the report results after we run the run the thing we get the report the report we have to okay. analyze it could be pass or fail if it is failed then we have to create a defect report for that 
right so this is what is happening here that is what is mentioned also here verifying the first <clears throat> before running our test cases first we have to verify the test environment where we have built the test environment in the implementation stage but verify we have to do in the execution stage okay yes correct so there is a chance okay. that we have built the system long back now execution came after 3 weeks but that time we have to see that the environment is still working fine right so that's a verification of the test environment happens in the execution stage okay then verifying traceability between the test bases and test cases so uh, traceability between test bases and test cases actually it should be test bases and report right our results summary report not actually here yeah. this we should change it because this traceability we see actually this traceability is, it is actually established <laughs> during the design stage but it is verified in the execution stage they just want to verify that before ah, you start okay. your execution they just want to see that whether all your test cases are linked to some uh, requirement or not or okay, any other requirements okay. are open something like that so that's why verification happens here but establishing okay. is done in the design stage mm -hmm. okay right so if the if we say report then we say we will see here the word Established traceability between test basis and requirement. Okay. Then, this is a very simple point. We told them we have to execute our test case. So, execute the test procedure in planned sequence. Where it is planned? The sequence. In implementation phase. Right. This is done in the implementation stage. It could be of manual or it could be of like through tool also. Anything manual also they will tell these are the test cases you have to do. Okay. Logging the outcome of test execution, obviously, right? Whether it is passed or failed, whatever that okay. logging we have to do. How we do that? Obviously, by comparing the actual result with the expected result. So this is expect. Okay, see, comparison of actual result and expected result is done in the execution stage. Clear. But where is defined? Yeah. What is expected? Where it is defined? Which stage? Which uh, design doc. Design stage, right? So in the design stage only we define it, but we compare it here. Report mm -hmm. the defect based on the failures observed. So reporting also done here. Analysis of the anomalies means like failures. So we have to analyze the failures in this stage and repeating the test activity. How, in which case we will repeat the test activity. Suppose you find that you have executed your test case. Developers have fixed it. After that, what will happen? Again, we have to retest it. Retest that, yeah. So the retesting is nothing but again execution only. So that will also be done in the execution stage. Okay. Okay. So this is all about the test execution activity. Now what will happen in the completion stage? Whatever we have done in the testing, we have to store them and we have to create the report. Right? Mm -hmm. That is what we are going to do. And whatever we have done during the execution time, we have to see that whether we have read anything lesson learned and all those stuff will happen in the completion stage. So that's what, let's see what is there. So final summary report will be created in this stage. Okay. Okay. Close yeah, uh, Ajit, there was one question here in completion. Uh, it was a scenario based where uh, they said that uh, such and such uh, thing happened and what was missed in the report expected actual and uh, uh, environment setup and few two three uh, options were given in that i was supposed to identify what was actually required to uh, mm -hmm. fill in that incident report uh -huh. the incident report is different that is from the chapter number five. Oh, okay that mm -hmm. will cover there okay i have a very big list what all things should be there and then you have to see that what is missed in it okay Okay. Okay. This question, but it will come from chapter number five, not from here. This is different. So here, like all the defects you have created. So that question is for while creating the defect. This is you have mm -hmm. already created the defect, but just uh, how many defects are closed, how many defects are open, all this list will be present in this completion report. Okay. Okay. Raising change records for remaining open defects. So that's what I was saying. The open defects also. Uh, the defects are open, right? For the next release, it, they, someone should fix it, right? So for that, they will they will create a change request. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
yes. then documenting the acceptance of the system so if everything is fine then uh, someone will do approval and everything then like this system they can accept something like that finalizing and archiving the test and test environment test wares and test environment so test wares mm -hmm. i told you know whatever is the output of your testing activity is a test wear it could be test case test script or uh, your reports everything whatever you have developed during your testing activity all the outputs are test wear so you only need to store that as well as your test environment you have to at least mention that which version of the hardware you have used all these things okay okay so this also like in completion report so it is part of the completion report handing over the test wear to the maintenance team so for example if your activity is completely done normally this is how the testing activity will happen in one cycle many testing activities will happen but there will be a final uh, stage where you release the it to the customer after that this team will not work on this one it will give it will be given to the maintenance team so they will take care of it okay so that is that is what they are talking about that it's a completion of the project final analyzing the lesson learn so many things will go wrong in the project right or maybe right also so those things we have to discuss is parts of completion only and we have to use this information to improve our process to increase the maturity of our team or the process yes okay. so this okay. is all about the completion activity <clears throat> now we go to the next phase did you get any question from psychology of testing no no that is this is not very important topic sometime you get sometime you don't get this is how it is okay. but as a tester we should know this topic uh, it's quite good i see um, and sometime we also understand that as a tester we see that our responsibility is to find the defect okay this is one thing which is very clear there are some mm -hmm. else which is not very clear to us and this is the topic which gives you that clarity so as a developer first of all we have to see that what as a developer they think they think that whatever software they have deliver is of accepted quality that's why he is delivering mm -hmm. it right he thinks that yeah whatever i'm giving it is working fine that's what is the yes. next it is of good quality it will work fine it will do what it needs to do and he will think mm -hmm. that developers are too negative because they are finding mistakes in my module this is how a developer may think because they have spent a lot of time and they have delivered it okay now as a tester we think that software contains defect software will not work it will not work the way it should work okay and they think that developers are too optimistic they think that developer think that everything will work so you can see the prospective difference here okay yes but this is our job so we we think this way but this is developer job to provide the solution that's how they think in this way now we will this topic will cover at the end independence of testing i want to maintain the continuity first okay so psychology of testing again testers if a tester finds a bug okay or a defect or a failure that means he has done a good job he has saved time and money he has reduced the risk right this is what it means but yes. developers can take it as a criticism for their work or at some time for themselves itself mm -hmm. they may think that someone is criticizing their work or they may think that someone is criticizing them though it is about the document or the product it is always about the product okay this is what we should keep in mind yeah the next so what is the possible approach okay promote collaboration not battle so when we go when we go with a defect or a problem to a developer we should go with a report it should not be like a verbal thing uh, if it is like sometime we are friends and colleagues here so that time it is fine but otherwise we have to see that we go with a report in a fact focused way that this is what i was expecting this is what i am getting can you please have an analysis instead of going and saying that this is such a small mistake uh, this is such a small thing why it is going wrong there are different ways of saying the same thing right so that time the developer may think that they are saying i have made mistake even if it is such a small thing so we should go with a facts fact focused way we both as a tester as well as a developer we should 
see that remind that we are working for a common goal that is to give a better quality system we should always keep yes. this in mind any discussion happening anything we should always keep okay whoever is talking we have a common goal that we want to increase the quality this is the last point uh, third point which i have already said here communicate failure point so it is the task of the tester to make sure that we communicate the failure in a neutral fact focused way we should be neutral we should not be criticizing the product or anything we should be very neutral saying that this is what we are observing this is what we are expecting and we can also ask them are we doing right thing we can ask them so they will only see that and they can only tell yes we are doing it right or wrong okay do not criticize the author so this is a big no we should not any time uh, criticize the author yeah understand how the other person feels so as a as a testing team because we are the one who is going to give the negative news then we should see that normally how a system, how a person takes it every person takes it in a different way when we communicate then this is our responsibility to see that how are we going to communicate to them okay try to understand why they react as they do so sometimes we may also see that the developer once we give tell that this is a problem they may react every developer will react in different way right so that time we yes. should see that how why they are reacting it so maybe under pressure or their modules are very complex or they are finding so many bugs in it there could be multiple reasons because of which they are reacting in that way so there is no point in fighting over there then confirm the other person understood what you have said and vice versa okay then we are also have to understand what they are saying so instead of sticking to point that oh no no this is how it should work so but when they are saying then we should see that okay is it making sense we should read the requirement again if we still see that okay there is a problem again communicate that as per the requirement or requirement number this this is how is the behavior fact focused way at the end so this is how we should discuss so these are some possible approaches and the main thing which we need to take here is that it should be a fact focused way everyone should see that it should be a common goal to increase the quality and never criticize an uh, the author okay okay Mm -hmm. so now uh, i have seen recently one question where they were saying that uh, as a tester now what is your uh, means good characteristics of a tester apart from this they have written one more thing to find defect okay we are reading only this part so here what is there let's see first curiosity so as a tester we should be curious enough so if we give if we are given with a feature we should be curious enough to know about this feature instead of just testing it we should be curious enough to know this feature how this feature works and all those stuff and then apart from our testing test cases we should play with this system just because of the curiosity and always like we have said this should, professionalism should be there that is one thing next one is the critical eye so if you are testing test case 1 if you see something else going wrong we should also capture that not only what is written in our test case one if something while doing is something different happens even if these test cases are passing but we saw some different behavior we should not see that okay no my test case two or three does not include this so i will not if it is there if it is not part of you you have to inform to someone that i see some different behavior so it should be critical i should be there attention to details so when we have a requirement then each and every line we should read with a complete detail with a with complete concentration and focus we have to go through each of these lines and we should be a good communicator the other person should not feel that we are criticizing them so that way apart from that i saw one more line to find the defect if all these options are there no the characteristics of a good uh, uh, tester is that to find the defect only okay we have everything yes. and we are not finding the defect <laughs> so it is not going to help mm -hmm. right so at the end finding defect is only the first thing first priority okay. okay okay so this is one thing and after this we are end but now this level of independence okay this topic we will cover i will not go through this lines here but i will give you a generic information so suppose there is an organization in that you have a team in this team you have a developer so you have a person okay here one person one team member is there he is only doing the development activity and testing activity so can we get a independence here no right so here the least independence you will get 
could be another scenario that you have a develop team here you have two team members in the same team and one is doing the development activity another one is doing a testing activity with this the degree of independence is increasing right yes. two, 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 there is another thing that you have a you have a department in that department you have one team here you have another team here this team is completely responsible for development activity this team is completely responsible for testing activity you can have a different mm -hmm. manager here you can have a different manager here too so here again it is the degree of independence is increasing you can have another scenario that where you have two different organizations this organization is responsible for development activity this is organization is responsible for testing activity so here you will achieve the highest degree of yes. dependence so this is the concept no need to go through these points here and same thing is written with this the chapter number one ends now you see that that's any question came from chapter one and then is not covered here or everything is covered you see i think from oh, it's covered everything is covered yeah Okay, then before we start chapter number two, I think I also need some break now, maybe 15 minutes. Uh, so it's okay. already 12 3. So shall we have a 15 minute break and then join again? Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, then yeah. Thanks. Then let's join after Thank that. You. Okay, bye bye.
tiger and you're there. Yes, I did. I'm there. Okay. Um, we see some questions from chapter number one or let me see if we can see some questions. So there are some <clears throat> this. Okay, maybe we can start. Uh, we can just uh, have a look into this one. Some questions. Let's uh, before going to the next one, next topic. Okay. Uh, B is the right answer, right? B is right. But if it can be the result of an error. Right. So that uh, reverse concept we saw, no? that one based on that. Yeah. Okay. Let's put the next one. Let's consider the following statement. And which one is, which one of them are correct? We need to. Okay. Find this one, two, and three are correct. Four and five are false. Mm, so here, no, the, the, a defect is produced as a result of failure. No, failure is produced as a result of defect. A defect. Ah, okay. Correct, no? This is yes, yes. Defect is not produced because of failure. Failure is produced because of defect. So this is how we sometimes go wrong. Yeah. So it looks like first is not the answer in that case. Uh, so we can leave this. Yeah. This is your shot, right? Defects are also referred to as bugs. Or, yeah, that is correct. The third one, where and all, we have three. I think in these two, we have three. And right? B and C, yeah. Now let's see the fourth one. Failure can cause bug. No, no. Bug can mm -hmm. cause failure, not failure can cause bug. Now we are left with C only. Right answer. Two and three. So it's like uh, uh, you can have more things here also, okay? But then, like we have to combine both. We are, should read here and we should also have a look into the options too, just to mm -hmm. eliminate and then reduce our effort. Otherwise, you have to read these lines again and again. So when you have such type of questions, you know, always start from here. Okay. So that you can directly remove two or three options and then left with only two and then uh, you can mark easily. Then third one. Software testing will be required for the following reason to evaluate the quality of the testing. To find quality of not the testing that is wrong, confirm to good working practice. 
to meet legal requirements. This was one of the yes. So this is the mm, yeah standards, legal requirement, contracts. Yeah. Or, or not only this. Sometimes they give one more line here that uh, to inform the stakeholders. So that is also right. Mm. Right. Yeah. Next How much one. testing is enough? It is impossible to say when there are no defects remaining in the software. But there are a difference on the level of risk plus the time and the budget available. It depends on the experience of C is the answer. Mm. It depends on the level of risk. objective of testing, finding defects, uh, as is in the quality of the development process, and measuring the level of debugging and knowledge. A. A. Okay. Finding Sorry. defects. Sorry. Which is the correct statement dynamic and static testing works for the same positive testing reviews the content of documents static testing reviews the content of documents involves execution uh, <coughs> reviews the uh, c static testing reviews the contents of the documents right that's the answer the next one uh, what what is the relationship between testing and quality they are unrelated testing can improve quality by highlighting software failures so testing is concerned with software quality and with document concerned with uh, b yeah so finding failure anywhere yeah is related to document or something uh, in any place we can find so that's how we have to differentiate here okay which of the following statement is true? Debugging finds an uh, finds analysis and removes the cause of failure. Developers use debugging instead of testing. De uh, debugging is confirming that a developer has fixed a major task of test is debugging no. A debugging finds analysis and removes the cause of failure. So sometimes where people go wrong when they see finds no, they think finds defect. It's not finds defect. It's finds the cause. Yeah. Oh, so okay. Not. Okay. Debugging finds the cause of the failure. Correct. We have to be careful. So it's not the, if it is finding defect, then it's not debugging. Okay. Then this statement would have been wrong here. Like debugging yeah. finds defect, analyzes and removes the cause. So that would be wrong. But it is about finding the cause actually, analyzing the mm -hmm. cause, removing the cause. So that is why it is the right answer. Okay. So finding of the defect happens in the testing stage. So that is what. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which of which one of the seven principles of testing material testing is exhaustive testing is essential it is impossible uh, independence is uh, testing is impossible and testing proves uh, early testing early testing. testing proves the absence of defects so it is not absence of defect right? i also use this word it was the presence of defects yeah yes. presence of defect but not the absence of defect so absence. the other way around everything maybe now let's try this one Okay, the fundamentals uh, test process consists of the following activities testing process, analysis, design, completion, planning, monitoring, and control, implementation, and execution, which is the correct order they are asking here. Yes. Okay, planning and monitoring. We then analyze and design, then we implement and execute, and then comes the uh, test completion. So, three should come first, second should come last, right? So, three, yeah. actually, so this will be the answer. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, which of the following is a major task in test analysis and design identifying and prioritizing test conditions specifying exit criteria scheduling the test analysis and test design or test task and creating test data uh, a we identify and we prioritize the test conditions right. creating of test data in which stage we do create uh, in uh, uh, design phase in the design stage, we only identify, okay, or we create during uh, creating the... in okay implementation phase. Yes, so this is how we have to be careful. So design is only identifying, but if you are creating, you're preparing, you're building the data, then it goes to the implementation stage. Yeah, we did not cover this uh, exit criteria, entry criteria. Uh, because this is uh, in the planning stage you do. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so that is why it is not covered. Scheduling also, you do it in the planning stage. So actually, these two are from the planning stage, and this and comes from the implementation stage. Yeah, and why I, was stress, why I was stressing here is that because this is the place where also we go wrong. Suppose it's the uh, because this test data comes in both the stages, design as well as implementation, and always there is a confusion between this when what should come. So identification should identification should go to the design stage, and creation, preparation, or build. These three words should go to the implementation stage okay okay which is not part of test analysis and design reviewing the test basis designing and prioritizing high level test cases identifying necessary test data creating the test data uh this will, creating the test data will anyway go to uh, the implementation phase 
identifying necessary test data will go to analysis identifying necessary test data design phase mm -hmm. and designing and prioritizing high level test cases is also in design phase reviewing the test basis mm -hmm. uh, yes we do this in analysis phase right so this is also you can see now if you know properly this concept this difference yes then only we can answer this otherwise yeah. it's like, <laughs> looks same everything looks same right. here. yeah Okay, the fourth which is a major task in implementation and execution, verifying that the test environment has been set up correctly. Okay, that we do in execution phase. Right. Uh, then evaluating testability of the test basis is done in evaluating will be done in uh, execution phase. No, evaluating. Uh, wait. Testability, wait. right? Oh, oh, design. Uh, it comes in analysis phase, I think. Analysis. Testability of the test right. basis. Test basis, yeah. testability, test condition. Three words you have to remember for analysis. Testability, oh, sorry, test basis, testability, and test condition. Condition, mm. yeah. This would be your, uh, not your answer, okay. Uh, then writing test summary reports for stakeholders will be in the execution phase. Mm -hmm. For completion, completion, that is in the completion phase. Yeah. And designing the test environment setup, it is in implementation phase. It is in design stage. It is designing, designing. the test environment. You're okay. not building it. So it is just designing means they are in a paper. You are just telling that this is what we'll connect to this one. This one will connect um, to this place like that. So you'll just make a design here. Whatever you put here will be built or implemented in the implementation stage. Okay, so A is the answer. A is the answer because it directly relates to the execution. Even execution. at the end in the implementation also you do that. So this is the major task here. Okay. okay. Yeah, next one. Uh, monitor and control includes which of the following tasks? Logging the outcome of the test execution that is uh, done by execution. Not monitor, specifying exit criteria, creating test suits from uh, test cases, assigning if no test or uh, C, creating test suits from test cases. But why this is monitoring stage, no monitoring and control. Monitoring and control. This one, this one normally when you test through implementation. implementation, but they are not asking mm -hmm. implementation. Anyway, but I have not covered this topic anyways. Yes. It's part yes. of your chapter number five. But uh, what logging. you do is that yeah, logging the outcome of execution. So whatever you execute, then you log it. So it's maybe part of your no, sorry. Assessing if more tests are needed, maybe part of monitoring and control. Do you see that you have executed everything? Because logging is done in the execution stage itself. Specifying the exit criteria happens in the planning stage. Planning. Creating test suit happens in the uh, implementation stage. You are assessing, right? Because you are monitoring, You are something is happening, you are monitoring, and then you feel that, that you need to write more test cases to complete something. That is a control activity. Something is going in different direction, you want to control it. You think that okay. something is not covered. Now you want to cover, to cover that you are writing some more test cases. So assessing if more tests are needed. So you are monitoring it and based on that, you are taking some action that is a control. D is the answer here. But anyways, once we cover chapter number five, this will be clear. But this is how, this is the answer. Okay. Okay. Uh, sixth one, not, not a task of uh, test completion. Analyze uh, lessons learned. We do that. Closure of uh, defect reports. Documentation of the acceptance of the system writing a test progress report for stakeholders we do this closure of uh, defect reports documentation of the acceptance of the system not a task of test completion you're saying mm. but c documentation of the acceptance of the system mm. this one. Of the defect reports writing a test Let's see what it would be one moment defect reports I am suspecting between B and C. Documentation and acceptance you will create here because in the completion, I told you that you will analyze everything and then we will then we will say that whether we are expect, accepting this or not. Okay. Okay. Because this is the completion activity, there we will do that. But I think writing a test progress report for the stakeholder, test progress report. Why you will do in the completion stage? Because here everything is done, right? So that's okay. Why. That, uh, writing a test progress report 
part of execution activity yeah let's just see that what is the here because we have some confusion in that six to one answer of the previous time six to one right that is six to one yeah should be d actually that's what i see six to one d, d. okay the okay. reason i gave you there only anyway i will explain it further because as i mentioned right your task is completed right and then why you will give a progress report mm -hmm. progress report you will give when you are doing the task that time you will tell that okay this much we have completed this much but now you are have completed so that time you don't need a progress report okay okay yeah and that's how that uh, it uh, that time we would need a summary report that time we need a summary report correct that what we have done everything and this is what uh, we have achieved so and documentation of acceptance testing why as i mentioned that uh, now your task is done you have a lot of defect this that everything you have there finally you have to give a report saying that whether this we are accepting this system then you will deliver it to the customer okay Closer is fine. What all defects are that the closer report and lesson learned, all these things are fine. Only thing is, once we are done with everything, then why we need to give a progress report now? Okay, that's why option B is the answer. And I think this is this exact part we have also covered in our uh, PPT also. That's what I think. But let me just open the PPT. If not, I will also include there. But I know that it is already covered. Chapter number one, right? See this one, document okay. acceptance of the system. Okay. Okay. So this is covered here. So yes, this is how it is. And sometimes we can also try to think if you are very much confused then just see that what we are actually doing in completion means some thought we can put more. And since the task is already completed then there is uh, no point in giving the progress report anymore. So I thought in that way. Okay. okay. During which fundamental this process activity will be directed press reports. A implementation and execution. Mm -hmm. Examiner of the above. We are writing the test progress activity. Okay, fundamental test process activity to press report. It should be B actually because when you are monitoring, right? So while monitoring, you get the data. So at that time you know that okay, how much you have written, I mean how much is the task done during the monitoring for example monitor, one of the activity of monitoring is the your normal meetings stand up meetings or daily meetings so that is part of monitoring only and this is a place where you know right what is the progress happening in your okay team. i was actually thinking in a way that we have execution we already have what is pass and what is fail so yeah, that, that is part of monitoring again you are executing is one thing then after that you are collecting the data that how much you have executed is the part of uh -huh. monitoring Okay, okay. So trying to monitor it. Okay. okay, fine. Now the following are levels of independent high. This one should be simple, I think. This one, test designs are uh, designed by an outside organization, test designed by a person who wrote the what we have to do, levels of independence. Okay, test designed by the person who wrote the software. Uh, uh, X will be the least one and uh, W is going to be the highest priority, designed by someone else in the development team and uh, designed by the independent test team. So uh, W, Z, Y, X. W, oh, that is not there. W, Z, Y, designed by an outside organization. First w one, will be the first one. Uh, least one we need first. Or least one. Least two most. Okay, least two most we need, okay. 
least is x that is first one mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, uh, y mm -hmm. someone else in the development team then z mm -hmm. and then w b then b is the answer here so independence in testing means what does that mean Artists do not communicate with developers, someone other than the developer designing the test. Each testers work independently from all the other testers. So testing being planned independently from the rest of the projects. Someone other than the developer designing the test. Third, B. B. Yes. Mm. Now the last one. Consider the following statements. Independence in testing helps to remove author bias. Yes. Uh, testers uh, requires a different mindset to uh, developers. Communication between test and developer is not important. Independent testing is ill advised. Uh, independence is gained. Independence is gained by someone other than the author design designing the tests. Okay, what we have to do here? True or false? Okay. Uh, v. Mm -hmm. Then. Uh, Z is true. V Z and uh, Y is W testers require a different mindset. Yes, uh, w, uh, v, w, Z that is uh, true. Oh, one thing is again, like if such type of questions are there, now we should also consider this. So if you see here, V and W are always true. No, yeah. So in this case, it is false, but in other three cases, no, they are always true. So there is oh. a, a very high probability. Means this is how the questions are framed. Also that. Yeah. If you see a maximum number of things in one side, right? Like here for true, you see V and W as right. That means there is a high probability that W is also right here. Mm -hmm. okay, because you already know V is right. So W cannot be wrong, no? It could be of this only. V is right means then W is also right. So you already know V and W are right. Now you okay. have to evaluate X and Z. So even if you don't read Y, it is fine. Mm -hmm. So you, 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 have, you remove one option by the, by analyzing the options itself then you are left with x and z x and z you have to just evaluate whether x is right or z is right or both are wrong okay okay so then z is right means b will be your answer then x and y are false fine okay so uh, what i see normally is that if you go with an approach especially for such type of questions it takes a lot of time to solve them because you have to read everything and then make a decision for these things instead start from the options itself this will uh, okay. eliminate a lot of stuff here okay mm -hmm. normally we are always lucky that you see the highest probability so they say true to true no that means this and this are always true means this is what i have seen always that you will get answer from this only very rare case that D will be the answer in any scenario when they have this type of question. It's not D means I mean one which is different from all other will is the answer. Okay. Very rare case. I mean, if we are very unlucky, that is another scenario. But whatever experience I have and seen the questions, I have always seen that the odd ones are not the answer. The one which is very similar, right? They want to confuse you. So now you are left with only these three options. Okay. But you can okay. apply this concept anywhere, uh, wherever you, whenever you get these questions, no. Uh, I will, you will see that you will get from the likely one only, you will get the answer. Okay, okay fine. Okay, I'll uh, keep this in mind next time. Yeah, this will also help you to reduce your time to solve the question. Yeah, I think this time I wasted a lot of time reading all the options. Yeah, this is what I'm doing. And I also reading. lost interest in reading those options. There is so many. Yeah, because, yeah. And like this, you will get minimum three to four questions, right? Three to four will be there. Yeah. Such type of questions. yeah. Okay, so we now can go to chapter number two, two here. So we have spent almost half an hour for uh, the questions and the answers after chapter number one. Now, if we go to this part. Okay, so testing through the software development life cycle. Again, this chapter is uh, divided into I would say three parts basically. The first part we discuss about the software development life cycles, SDL life cycle model. SDLM software development life cycle model we say and then we will talk about test levels and then we will talk about test types. 
software development life cycle model we are going to cover only two one is the uh, incremental okay. and other one is the iterative okay. Oh, okay so it is v model we will cover here and here it is agile model mm -hmm. when we go for test level we will see four component integration integration testing could be component integration or system integration then you will have system testing and then finally acceptance testing these are the main after that we will also see some maintenance testing also and in the test level we will just see black box testing white box testing uh, maybe or maybe in functional testing non functional testing and experience based testing okay so this is the complete overview of chapter number 2 and what are we going to cover in this let's cover the first part then so directly starting with mv model uh, here now means from the exam point of view what we need to understand is v model in the v model everything happens in parallel we are not doing any activity after one activity is done okay we don't wait for the steps to complete here we start parallelly i will also get into that how we do parallelly things here but this is the major concept and this is what i see that questions are asked from means keeping this concept as a back end they will ask the questions so when you read you have to always keep in mind that in a v model we never have to wait for a process okay so this if you have this understanding if you develop this understanding with this if you go for a question or answer then you can easily mark your answers okay now how is a v model so in a v model normally we get a requirement from the customer so business requirement is like a customer requirement we get a requirement from the customer after that within our team so always this first part no we can always separate it out okay the complete part is by the customer and this is by our own organization so from this requirement in an our organization we fine tune these requirements based on our need so this is the interface specification you can give different names system specification or interface specification anything then you have a design document like as i told you the high level design and then low level design so specific system specific design specification and then technical design specification this is a high level design this is a low level design after that you will have the component specification at the component level you will go after that you will have the software once the software is ready you will go for component testing then component yes. integration testing system testing system integration testing and finally the acceptance testing so this is the hierarchy here okay. now i told one thing so this is typically a development activity left hand side is a development activity right hand side is a testing levels next the concept that we do things parallelly okay so now again i will divide this part suppose so now when you have the uh, and you should also know one thing in mind okay this one there is two part of testing okay the first part is that where you do the analysis you design and you do the implementation there is a the next part where you only do the execution right so as i mentioned for execution you should have everything ready so right. for that one so now suppose you are in the business requirement until this part you can complete you cannot do the execution because obviously the software is not there at this point right once you have this requirement but at least you can start with the analysis right you can start the acceptance planning and then you will write the test case here you and uh, you will create the test environment here okay until here once you get the software and the you once the software reaches at this point then you can directly start the acceptance testing so these activities are happening in parallel it's not like that once we reach at this point then we start test case and everything no once as soon as you have the business requirement you can start with the these activities is it clear yeah only the execution will happen in this stage rest of the things you have already started Okay. Similarly, when you have the system-related requirements, you don't have the software. You don't need the software for that. So, for execution only, you need the software. Again, you will analyze this, 
and you will write your test case you will make your test environment ready and if still the software does not come you can wait here or you can improve something once the software comes you will utilize all those things for your execution same goes with all the steps so each step in each step we can work in a parallel way it's not like that once the software is available then we will start working on it oh yeah hmm? so this is the concept for the v model moving next iterative model again uh, instead of going through the points let's have a uh, ajit can you go back to the previous slide i have one question there mm -hmm. uh, so here uh, component testing is nothing but unit testing and uh, integration testing is like uh, testing uh, different components together mm. i understand uh, after uh, integration testing we have system testing but what is a system integration testing so what exactly yeah. do we do in this level mm -hmm. so when there is a oem right the oem will be here the oem will give component to different different components for example i just take an example of a car So okay. one person will be making a braking system. Another one might be making a airbag system. One may be something doing with the engine. Okay. Now this braking okay. system for this company it is a system, complete system. For this company, this airbag is a complete system. For this, it is a complete system. But when they give it to the uh, to the OEMs, then the OEM will make a system integration testing whether this system. is able to interact with this system or not at their level okay okay so this is a system system integration testing so oem has to take a lot of systems from many places right and mm -hmm. and the end it should work together also that's what they have to ensure will be done at the oem level okay so that's why so you same have same concept same concept applies even for uh, component integration testing yes so you have initially the component once two components are ready then you do a mm -hmm. component component integration but until you have one component you can only do component testing you cannot go for component integration yes. similarly once one system is developed you can do system testing but once two systems are available then the oem can do the system integration testing of it okay fine and then once the complete system is ready all the integration of all the systems are done Finally, it will go for the acceptance system. Acceptance system. Okay. Okay. Okay then. Now, if we go to the iterative model, so what will happen here is, mm, <laughs> yeah. So how to explain this is suppose you have to complete a task in one month. Okay, one month of time. So what we do is we normally divide it into. maybe into two sprints we can divide or suppose you have to do it in three week so we will go with a one week one week one second week and third week concept mm -hmm. now in this week what we will do is we will do everything analysis design implementation execution everything we will do here okay and here the complete testing activity will repeat for example you have in three weeks you have to implement 15 features So how it will go is you will implement five features here five or five it depends on many factor not necessarily five 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 it could be three two or something like that and completely at the end it should be fifteen features any way we can divide it now when we start working here so I means complete structure is different from V cycle okay V cycle normally we do it for a very big project for example when you are making a car. That time it takes almost three to four years for making all the things ready. Okay, so that time every six months or every three months you have a release. But within these three months you don't have multiple releases. So complete time you get for the creation of your test case everything, and finally you do the execution here. Here also it is same, but it is happening more frequently. Means weekly target or bi-weekly we do it. Okay. so here what will happen is when you are running the five test cases you are developing the five test cases then you will write the five test case here okay at the after that developers will work only on for the five new requirement but once their requirements are done you are going to test 10 requirements only because there should be there could be side effects also on on the previous requirement yeah. so you will test 10 and here developers will only implement five more requirements but you will be testing 15 requirements here yes one thing other thing is that suppose during this time you have tested five test case you found the bug so five test case plus bug they will fix here 
Right. So that's how the, it will go. Then because of this bug, there is a possibility something might have changed. Yes, and you are going to test everything. That's why here automation is very, very important. The concept of automation because developer's task is reduced. Tester's task is increasing from release to release. They have to test more and more. How can they do that if they don't have the automated scripts? So that is why here the concept of regression testing comes into picture, especially in case of an agile model. Okay. If the question is that agile model or regression testing is where it is more applicable, B model or in the agile model, then it will be agile model. Okay. Okay. So this is what is written here. We will also go through it that user usable subset of the requirements. So we have complete requirement, 15 requirement. We took a subset of working requirement. End of each release, now we have a working software here. Okay. So this is what they're telling. From the requirement, we take the subset of the requirements. First thing. Shorter development cycle. This is what I told. Three weeks. Three weeks also means they will also divide into three one one week. It's not like that. They will implement everything and then finally do the testing here. They will not do like that. So three weeks they will divide. That's shorter development cycle. Software producing iterations. So how it is like first five features plus five features, then here ten features, then here fifteen features. So it is subset of features we are in, uh, creating. Regression uh, testing. One Mm -hmm. One question is now whatever we are discussing, I I work for agile model, so this is what we follow. So are we talking totally about agile model here when we say iterative incremental model? Yes, yes. this what means here. I was telling you no? where I have mentioned in the first slide. Yeah, so V model or the sorry uh, incremental model or iterative model. Iterative model means example is agile model only. Agile model. Okay. Okay. So I think then uh, you are already working in this model. So nothing much is required. Your day-to-day -day life is this one only. So <laughs> we can do yeah. that. So it is again a growing partial system, right? Slowly it is growing. And as each increment, at uh, more testing is needed. So that's why we yes. also need a concept of regression testing. So, And then you are aware of these terms. Otherwise, also after this uh, course, you can also go for agile testing course where again these things are explained in much detail this from Kanban. Okay. Uh, this thing is not explained but spiral what is all these things they have mentioned there okay? but it is nowhere related to our uh, foundation level it's not required mm -hmm. okay so we'll restrict until here only okay now there is a next concept called verification and validation so verification is like are we building the product right, like each stage we check that are we building the right product. Validation means once the product is ready at this point or the part of product is ready, then as a whole product we use it. So verification comes here and validation comes at this time when you have the product ready for you. Okay. Okay. So you will have multiple releases, right? All these releases, it's all verification only happening. But at the last, when you have this, when uh, you test with help of specification and you also can test multiple random stuff also, right? So you are actually doing a validation here. And especially at the acceptance testing level, it is validation, it's no more verification. Okay, okay. So if I have to just divide that component, component integration system and acceptance testing, for an example, so here you are doing verification at system level. You can do verification and validation and acceptance level. You do val validation only. Okay. Okay. So this is how this goes, but you have to, you have to be very careful with these two words. Very, very important. And uh, just remember if you have product at the end, that means it is validation. Sometimes we get confused no, between these two statements. Like, are we building product right? Are we building right product? So here only difference in these two words here. So when you have product at the end, it is, they are referring to validation. If you have product before, then it is verification. You can also remember this diagram that if it is before, it is verification. If it is after, it is validation. Okay. Okay. And just for, <laughs> to, so that you remember it, that's why I'm just telling in this way. Otherwise, the concept I have already explained you, right? So, 
because I have seen that uh, means we know it properly, but in exam, uh, some again we get confused. What is the answer here? Because uh, apart from these two, no, two more options will be there for making it more confusing. So if you yes. have at the product at the end, that time consider it as a part of validation. Nowadays they are not asking question on these two. Uh, that's what I see. Mm -hmm. So what is the uh, good characteristics of a life cycle model? Uh, that is what we will see here. So this is also very important. From there, I have seen some questions. And I think anyway, you, are, you got 100%. You also know these concepts clearly. That every development activity, there is a corresponding testing activity. So we have seen here, right, that if it is a good model, then you will, for each testing, each development activity, you will have a testing activity for it. Yeah. Each test level has objective specified for that level. So we have seen the component level, component integration. We will see the objective anyways. System testing, acceptance testing, their objectives are different and they are defined also properly. Okay. Then oh. test analysis and design of the test of the specification, all these things is in early test design or early testing can be done. If it is a good life cycle model, you can start your testing as early as possible. So as we have seen, as soon as you have this document, you start your testing activities here only. You do not wait the software is available and then you start from there. No. As soon as you have the requirement, your testing activity starts. It could be analyzing, designing, whatever it is. So that's the early testing or review activities. Apart from that, this is also one concept. Sometimes I have seen questions from it very rarely, but yes, testers should be involved in the reviewing the documents. Okay. As soon as I, the got, are I had got question from this one. Okay. Uh, tester should be involved in reviewing document. Yes. Yeah. As soon as the draft is available. So this is what it is written. Choice of model driven by project or product characteristics. Yeah. So this part. Okay. Choice of model means whether you go for iterative model or you go for incremental model totally depends upon the project and the product you are working on. It is again a context dependent. Okay. Okay. So that is how it is. That's the first part. That's what we need to remember there. One concept I told you is that um, always keep in mind for the V model, we never wait for any process to complete. Okay. We always do the activities parallelly. That's one important concept over there okay so now let's move to test levels so when we have test levels right so i have also mentioned that you have component testing component integration testing or system, system integration testing then system testing and acceptance testing okay these four levels we are talking about in this chapter for okay. each of these levels we have to see that whether we have clear objective, what we should test here, what we should test here in this level, at system level. So it should be clearly defined. Okay. Test. But you have not mentioned system integration and then system test. No, I have just uh, mentioned here system uh, component integration or system integration, any of these. Ah, okay, so I just okay. mentioned it as one. Means what I'm, I am telling here, not hierarchy, I'm just telling that any of these level, we should know the clear objective. We should know what are the input for these levels, what we should test in these levels, what are the different type of failures we are going to get in these levels, okay. and if any additional thing. Test hardness means anything you need, you have to develop in addition of uh, addition like addition to your test object. Okay, that is then tool support. If you need any tool, different type of tool. Obviously, for component testing, we need different tools. For system testing, we need different tools, right? So these things, <clears throat> and then if there are any specific approach and who is responsible for these type of testing. So usually for first two, no component and component integration, it is by the developer. Then system, system integration testing by the tester, acceptance testing by the tester, by the user, by the customer. Okay. This is how we have to divide it. You have component testing. It is always done by the developer component integration testing by the developer, system testing by the tester, system integration testing by the tester. You go to acceptance testing, it could be by tester, 
user or the customer okay so this should also be clearly known sometimes question comes also from the responsibility part okay so how the question is going to come like this uh, jumbled up and all those stuff which test basis belongs to which uh, test level mm -hmm. requirements so something like that and what is the objective of component testing or they will give some objectives then they will give some test levels they will tell you to match it yeah something like that so here we should clearly know the uh, inputs what is required so test basis means you already know the requirement Test object means what are we going to test our product. It could be application, it could be with hardware, it could be application plus hardware, any combination. Okay. Um, shall we take a break of 15 minutes and then we continue this one? I think I okay, just yeah, sure. I've, yeah. So this is another topic. So we will start with a break. Uh, what is the time now? So that's one, yeah, one, one five. Four. Yeah, one five, then maybe okay. an, uh, 10 minutes only, and we will join back. Okay, one fifteen. Okay, fine. Okay, thanks.
Yes, I'm in now. Are you also in, Kiran? Oh, yes, I'm there. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so here also, because there are a lot of terms we are going to get in the levels, because as we have already seen, like for each test levels, we have to cover all of these things. So that means that a lot of data is going to come, but uh, if we just try to think logically, then uh, we don't have to buy hard too much. But obviously we have to go through twice and thrice, but we don't have to buy hard. And yeah, one more thing which I have with me is, uh, I don't know which if I have it with me now or not. I What I have done actually, you know, I have created one, one pages and in one page I have all the details like this, test basis and test object, everything for all the levels is in one page itself. So you, okay. I will also give you that. It's a very good quick revision before the exam or even now also, if you go through it, you don't have to go through all of these chapters and all. Yeah, I will provide you. I think I don't have that. So certain types of things I prepared as a notes. Let me check in my place. Mm, no. Okay, no problem. Anyways, it's in my other system, so I will open it. Uh, maybe tomorrow we will see. Okay. Okay, but yeah, I means from each chapter now I will give you a summary also of the chapter itself. So first for first chapter also I have so like what the important data now. Since you have already given exam, you will see that. So whatever page I have, so you will see that if you read that, I think very easily three or four questions can be asked, can be answered directly from those pages itself. Okay, so that's how it is. And it will help. Okay, so now when we go to the component testing level, we will understand what is component testing. But before that, so if we think from the uh, from the testing point of view at the component level, what we test is we test the component. For that, what we need, we need the component specification. We need the detail detailed design, and we also need the code. These three yeah. things should be very much understood, right? That these are the things which we need. Even if it is not understood, then we should keep this in mind. We want to perform a component testing here. So that's why we need minimum these two data, these three things. Yes. One is component specification. After that comes the software. And before that is the design document. Yes. So that's why these all these three things act as an input for your component testing. So this is a logical way of thinking it or understanding it. Then there is a data model. Now you may ask, why is this data model needed when we need these three things? So in a component, inside a component, if you have an if and else statement, you have some data types, right? So their definition, what type of data this function accepts, this will be mentioned in your data model. Okay. okay. So type, like if it is of a, if this function is expect, accepting a value of Boolean type, so you need to know, right? This one, okay, is expecting a Boolean. These are the variables here. These variables are of integer type, these that. So all these things mm -hmm. you need at the component level, these things will be mentioned in your data model. Okay. So that's why addition to these three, you need data model. Fine. So this is, these are the requirements to your component testing. Okay, fine. And what you can test at this level, obviously you will test the components, units, modules, all these things means the small, related to code. Uh, smallest individual testable unit. It's yeah. not the smallest unit. If it is not testable, why should we perform component testing on it, right? So it's a right. smallest individual testable component. So this is so. If any of these things are missing, then uh, it's difficult. It should be an individual component. Uh, and then the classes. Uh, normally, if we go for a concept of C plus plus and all, then we know that there is a classes, and then there will be a class member and uh, class function all these things will be there so th this is also a single component okay so this is one thing then code itself so obviously when you take a function inside that what you test is a code yeah and then the data structures okay and then database module also so sometimes if this component is interacting with some module or inside this itself like you have a you have defined a variable of integer then it will have my means eight bit integer so you see that it is all these values you are able to give and when you give these values how the system reacts right yeah. so like likewise if something is of character if you pass something else it is not taking so all this at the component level variable level whatever things we can do is a database model here then 
so components units modules classes core data structure and database so quite easy to remember a lot of term means if i see a 10 to 12 terms are there which we need to remember but logically it's easy to remember right uh, that it they are they belong to component testing <clears throat> now suppose this is your complete system and then a is one component b c d e f g h all these are one 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 component single single components if you want to test component d so as we mentioned you need a component specification or design specification or you need a code itself this is inside this will be the code so this is what is a component uh, in a complete system a single uh, individual testable unit okay so that is a component there are two ways of testing it in the component level there are two ways so this is the first way where what you do is you execute your test okay and then you see that there is a failure then you locate the defect like you have a function just an example in this you have a lot of lines of code you executed your test case and you find that here is the problem in this line is the problem so you locate your defect in which line there is a defect or in which line the variable didn't update properly then you fix the defect then you retest and then if you have a failure again then you continue this if you don't have a failure then you stop yeah any normal testing process is like this but we also have one more concept that is called as test driven development or test first approach what is the difference between this and that is that suppose you have a requirement <clears throat> in the first approach that is the normal approach what you do is you start coding and you start testing activities also together and once the code is ready then you perform the testing on it right this is the approach but in the test driven approach what happens is from the requirement you write the test case first then after that you write the code based on the test case and based on the requirement so two inputs you will for writing the code here you had only one input but here you have two inputs for writing your code then you execute your test case and if it passes it is fine if it is not passing this process will continue i hope this is clear right here at the coding level uh, when you do the coding you have only requirement as input here when you do the coding before that only test case is written okay now if you see here so you have a test basis that is a requirement from this requirement as a first step you prepare your test case this mm -hmm. test case as a, okay anyways here first is written the second stage you automate your test case then preparing the test case is uh, like we uh, in a simple english we write like what this yes. particular uh, yeah case is going to do yes and here actually actual scripting or actually in unit testing level these two steps are combined only you actually don't write any test case type test case you directly write the code level test case only and that okay. you execute it so normally means uh, if you see in any organization so these two steps are always combined there okay but yeah you have a test case and normally you automate it okay then when you write the code so as i said this will be in the input and this also will be one of the input means you have to always keep in mind okay what is the requirement right based on that we have to develop the code then you have to execute this test case so here you first wrote the test case that's why it is a test first approach yeah okay uh, okay so this is how it is and i also told you the difference between that so here from requirement you write the code and test from here you from the requirement you write test but for writing the code you have you get two inputs so if you remember this diagram if it is in your mind then it's easy to understand this concept now we go to the next topic that is <clears throat> stubs and sorry drivers and stubs it's very clear it is a calling component or driver is a calling component stub is a called component but now we need to understand it what does that mean for example suppose you have one component so always remember this is what you are testing your focus is to test this module okay now okay now you want to test there are two part in it you want to test if any function calls this function that should be successfully means we can call this function successfully 
how you can test you don't have any other function no how you can test that that some other function is able to call this function for that you will create a dummy function suppose this is the only piece of uh, function available to you right now because developers are developing the code right and uh, this week you got this component now you want to test that if any function calls this function uh, then th uh, they should successfully call this function okay that is what you want to test but you don't have any function which can call this function right that time you yeah. create this function this is a driver okay this is a driver concept what is a stub concept now you always remember you are not testing at this level you are testing this module now this module wants to call any other function other functions are also not there right so now you will develop another function so that this function can call that function this is a stub okay so understood it this, so where you are testing that plays a very important role here any doubt here in this so that's why we call the driver is a calling function no? this is a driver driver is calling to the function which yeah. we want to test stub is a called component by the testable component so this is a called component it is called by this testable component testable component is called by the driver component here so driver component calls the testing means any way any way wording you have to keep this in mind and then in the exam you have to see the wording how it is they can do anything right any type of wordings they can use yes so you should not get confused between that so this is the diagram which we should focus on okay any doubt in this driver and stub now yes no i don't have any doubts i'm clear on this okay you already knew this component previously like drivers and yes oh okay. uh, yeah so this is what we are also showing here that suppose you want to test this component it is always important what you are testing so which component is under test so this component if a component a is calling component b then this component a is called as a driver component and if hmm. that component which is under test is calling any other function then that is called as a stub so this is stub yeah. this is driver okay so this is the concept now when we go to integration testing always remember one thing integration testing is always related to a word interface okay so always relate word interface or integration together okay so whenever in the options if you see something like interface is written so it should strike you that okay it is related to your integration only okay as we have already mentioned that the the interface could be between component or component so this is the interface and or the interface could be between system and system Mm -hmm. we actually test here is the flow of data okay then okay. that means the input which you need should contain this transitions right the input the for the integration testing whatever input you get should be in a form where you can see that where you can see the transitions right yeah. so now if you keep this in mind it is very easy for you to understand what are the input for test bases so mm -hmm. obviously design document will be there no doubt the system level design because system level uh, here if you see you no know, it is component design it's a component level design detailed design you need here okay yes but if you yeah. see you need a system level design why we need a system level design because in a system you will have lots of components and the system level design will tell this component is interacting with which okay. other component okay okay that's why you need a system level design here not the detailed design detailed design means detailed design will tell what this component okay. is okay system level design will tell the interactions also so you know that then if you have this one you know right you don't have to take the check the interface between this and this because there is no interface that's why yes architecture is also like that only since you are working you know that architecture will also have everything in it like which is in, what we are interacting when the hardware is interacting with software all these things will be there in the architecture yes. workflow see again there is a flow i told you know we need to understand the flow of data so again the word comes workflow so maybe workflow is in the form of uh, this one like uh, the flow chart something like that okay mm -hmm. anything like this is a workflow 
What is use case? Use case means I will just give you an example here. Suppose you have an ATM machine. Okay. Normally we feed the card into it. Okay. And then we get the cash out of that. But inside that lot of steps we go through, right? If you insert the card wrongly, so there will be a if condition here. If you insert the card wrongly, it will give a pop up to the customer saying that please insert the card properly. If it is inserted correctly, then it will go to the next step. Then it will ask that whether you, how much cash you need. If you yes. exceed the limit, then again, it will give a pop up to the customer saying that you have exceeded the limit. If you are within the limit, it will give you the cash. I have skipped a lot of steps in between, but just an overview I'm telling. So this okay. is the use case. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you know that when you have this use case, you know that which module is interacting with which module. And what okay. data needs to be transferred between that. So that is why this also is an example of integration testing. Okay. Sequence diagram. I don't have to explain here again, right? The sequence. So again, you see the sequence, which function will come first, which comes, which function will call which other function. So this sequence diagram also uh, is an input for the integration test. Okay. So what are you going to test? Obviously, the interface here. So <clears throat> subsystems. Subsystems means these are the subsystems, right? This, 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 this is the complete system. These are the subsystems. Infrastructure as a whole, infrastructure means how the data will flow from here to here, here to here, here to here. So complete infrastructure and APIs, application programming interfaces. So for the software, you will have some interfaces, right? Sometime with the help of uh, this GUI also we test whether we are able to give data to that particular uh, point or not. So these at the lower level, we have these interfaces, application level interfaces. Okay. Okay. Or sometimes this software is that this software wants to interact with this software. So they will have some mm -hmm. interfaces available. So once this function is this, this product wants to interact with this product, that time they will use the help of interfaces. So at the API level, we can have it. Both this complete concept is applicable for both component integration test and software integration test. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what are the different types of integration testing? There are two incremental and big bang. Big bang is a big no. Okay. Because here, suppose you have component like this. Okay. Now in big bang, big bang testing, we have done something and we found some error here. Okay. Now we have to, it is very difficult for us to evaluate what went wrong, where the variable changed that we are getting a wrong answer here in a big bang method. I'm, I'm giving a very small example. Suppose like this, a lot of components are there. If you test all of interfaces together, it's very difficult to identify which thing went wrong because of which yeah. module we have a wrong thing. That's why we should always go for an incremental model. So if you get an option where they tell which is the preferred model, big bang or incremental, if they are the option, then always incremental is the preferred one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now, so here we test one link at a time. Here we take check all the links at the same time. This is the main difference. Okay. Yeah. And then top down, uh, yeah. Sometimes what we can do is we can check the interfaces like top down approach, bottom up approach, top down, bottom up approach means suppose you have like this. So bottom down means so for, first you will check this, this, and this interface. Mm -hmm. Then you will go for this, this, this one, and like this. But if this is top down approach. Yeah. Okay. And then bottom up approach. Bottom approach means you will start from here, 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 complete this, and then you go here like that. Then okay. is another approach, functional approach. So you see that these functions are working uh, in a similar way with one, uh, if you test something, these functions are getting executed. So first you will check these interfaces. You will not check this one. Then in a second okay. shot, you see that this is a, a part of second function. Then you select this one, this one, and this one like this. Okay. okay. So this is, I think, clear. So these are the three approaches, top down approach, bottom up approach and functional task based on the function uh, functionality. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one is a big no here and always go for the incremental model. There are scenarios where they have to test big bang only like keeping everything first, they test everything incremental way. Then at the end, they go for big bang because everything we see that everything is working fine. This is working fine. This is working fine. This is working fine. This is working fine. 
then let's join all of these things together and check that whether they are working fine or not. Okay, yeah. Okay, now if you are at the system level, <clears throat> So now obviously you need a requirement at a very higher level, right? Not at a detailed design level, you don't need it. Yes. Now if you see that, so software requirement specification, SRS, obviously. Again, use case can be used here also, right? Uh, I give you the example of ATM machine. So that also okay. can help in this one. If you have something in model or state diagram format, you have no, normally you will have state diagrams also that once this event occurs, event one, you go to this one. If even two occurs, then you go to this stage. So this also helps us in writing the system level requirement. I think this no need to explain you because you are already working here. Epics and user stories in the agile model is yes. similar to SRS only, right? Uh, the epics contains the bigger version of your requirement, right? Yeah. And then from epics, you get the user stories. Then system and user manual. Sometime in the user manual also it will be written, right? How to test, uh, how to uh, install anything. So that also we should test whatever steps is mentioned here with that, we, whether we are able to install it or not. So this is also at a system level we need it. Uh, so I think when we read these requirements, we can clearly tell that, okay, this is at the system level, right? And now <clears throat> the next one. Any application, operating system, system configurations, and system under test, whatever is this thing related to the product, we can test it at system level. Any doubts here in this, any of these inputs? No, no, no doubts. Right, no. This is end-to-end -end behavior, actually, we want to test in the system level. So yeah. here we test the behavior of the system. So here we test this complete stuff. So in the component level, maybe here also small, small components will be there. Each component we have to test. Integration level, the interaction between this layer and this layer, and maybe this layer and this layer, something like that. And then this layer and this layer, integration testing. When it comes to system testing completely. Okay. Like a final yeah. target environment. <clears throat> maybe the word may be different here, yeah, final target environment. So in exam, this word may come. Mm -hmm. Final target environment, okay. <clears throat> okay <clears throat> one more thing when you are at the system testing level you can perform both functional as well as non-functional testing because your product is ready right so yes. that's why you can perform both functional as well as non-functional like, like type of testing and it is often done by the independent test team the system level testing and when we are doing a testing we can do risk-based testing. I told you, you know, initially we will identify the risk. Based on that, you right. can do the testing. Or you can do testing based on the requirement level. You have the requirement based on that, you are performing the testing. Business flow also, like you have a customer requirement with that you are writing. Or use cases, scenarios you already know. In the Agile project, we use use cases. I mean, this use cases, I told you, you know, like how the user is going to use the system. Mm -hmm. From that, we will derive our test cases and sometimes based on the models also, like state di transition diagram models, all these models. <clears throat> also, we can test. So main thing is that that at, when you are at a system level, you can perform both type of testing, functional and non-functional testing. <clears throat> okay. So one more big, uh, good, uh, one more important concept is that <clears throat> When you are at the acceptance level, no, you establish the confidence. Mm. But all the previous level, you only build the confidence. Okay. Now you okay. may ask, what is the difference between building the confidence and establishing the confidence? Building the confidence means you are testing. Again, if not, if defect is there, then you are fixing it and all those stuff. Here, you should not find the defect to build, to establish the confidence. Means now you don't have any mistake in your software. Means at least when the software, obviously there will be, but the customer is not able to find it at that point of time, right? That time. That time they say that we have established the confidence in your system. So here by finding the defects, you are building the confidence. Here by not finding the defects, you are establishing the confidence. So this is the very thin line difference between building confidence and establishing confidence. Okay. <clears throat> so since it is at the acceptance level, 
all high level documents will be here for your input. For example, user requirements, system requirement, use cases, business process, risk and based on risk, installation procedure, regulation related like standards and government regulations, contractual, all these things. So very high level requirement will be used here for acceptance testing. Okay. okay. Yeah. This also can be performed at functional and non-functional level because the product is ready. So you can perform both type of testing. <clears throat> Next one, typical test objects. So business processes, again, the high level things here, if you see the system testing, no, there you see that it is with respect to the project only, application, operating system, these things, system mm -hmm. configuration. But if you go here, you see a very high level things like the business process, the complete process itself of the business, operational process, how it is operated, as I told, installation, uninstallation, if something goes wrong, how the system will behave, all these things are tested here. Maintenance process, user procedures, as I told in the document, the, which is given to the user, right, with the product, like how to use this pro product or how to install yeah. certain things. So those things are also tested here. Any forms, reports, uh, if it is there, if it is a website, they have to fill some form or something like that, that will be tested here. Recovery system and hot sites. Recovery system is if you're using a product, something goes wrong, then can the software come back like the mobile phone sometime it will crash right it will be a while turning yeah. or while when you're using only it will crash but after that if you press the button are you whether the system is able to recover or not mm -hmm. that way hot sites is also related to that suppose you are using server one suddenly something goes wrong with server one can you switch it to server two which is a hot site okay 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 so this is your hot sites there is a difference between hot site and hot fix. Okay. Uh, yes. Hot site means server, hot fix means in the codes, they will not do the detailed analysis, but they will just do some hot fix so that next release they will uh, make it proper. So that is hot fix and this is hot site. So we have to make the difference between these two. I have seen in an exam, uh, they had these two options and uh, then they were asking. So that time the answer was hot sites for this acceptance testing. Hotfix okay. are now related to acceptance testing. Okay. All below levels, you can have hotfixes. But here, right. you can hot sites, yeah. Then there are four types of acceptance testing. One is user acceptance testing and operational acceptance testing. Other one is this contractual and alpha and beta testing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So user acceptance testing means from the point of view of user, how the user is going to use the system. Okay. So who is responsible for it? Business users. Okay. It is from the point of view of the user they are going to check. Now when we cover other one, you will see what is the next. You understood now acceptance testing is done at the last level. So obviously they have to focus how the user is going to use. So this is one type of testing. The other one yes. is, other one is if something goes wrong, one is installation, uninstallation, or recovery mechanisms, disaster me recovery me mechanisms, security vulnerabilities, all these things will come under your operational. When the system you are using, right? So these things, so disaster recovery, user management, maintenance tasks, data load, migration tasks. Migration means uh, one thing is that you have a mobile phone and you see you know, one update will come. That's the migration of data, right? One software was there, one version was there, the next version came. So yeah. migration tasks like that or the security vulnerabilities so suppose the mobile application is there sorry the banking application so every time they have to check that if any new vulnerabilities are there in it attacks and all from the outside world so those things need to check all these things are part of operational acceptance testing how the system should operate contractual and legal or legal regulation maybe regulation as i told it could be from the governments or it could be from the international standards anything is also tested here. So government, legal, safety, uh, contractual, all these things here. Okay. Okay. Then alpha testing and beta testing. Did you get question from here? Or um, this time not? Alpha testing and beta testing. No, I did not get, I think. Okay. Maybe you can expect this time now. Also a very okay. important topic uh, to get a question from. Alpha, alpha testing will be done or a uh, beta testing is done at the customer site and alpha will be done here. Our side at our side. Side, right? okay. yeah. 
and it is done by the independent testing team it is done by the at the field itself by the customer itself okay but only thing is we have to take care of these two words also applies to commercial of the self software cots commercial of the self software is nothing but you have your own software from outside as a plug and play you take one software from other third party you want to plug and play with your own software this software is called as commercial of the self okay okay so commercial of the self for testing commercial of the self software which level of test which test level is applicable then it is acceptance testing mm, fine hmm? next one this is also important word done by potential or existing customers potential means user is also your customer na potential customer user so done by potential or existing customers this is also very important word here for from the point of view of acceptance testing Okay. Okay. Potential or existing customer. So with this, the levels are done, and now we are into the types. Uh, just a minute. Let me just see. The types, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so types here we have like functional. We have non-functional. then you have the this is like white box testing and this is like change related if something change happens then we go for retesting and regression testing okay so functional testing means what the system like should a uh, function yeah like we have whatever we do in uh, component integration they are function testing right yes yes this one for example i will give you an example of suppose you are in this website okay now there is one click button mm -hmm. so now uh, functional testing tells what what should happen so it is just like if you click here they will tell that another page should open this is yeah. what is happening once you click this is what is happening this is your functional testing non functional testing once you click here after how much time it should open how smoothly it should open mm -hmm. that how so once you click how this page should open and once you click what should happen that is the difference here so in the functional testing like how smoothly how what is the response time all these things performance will come into picture okay how yes. it should load right so so this is the main difference between this but normally if you just remember what the system should do and how the system should behave or do uh, that is enough for from the exam point of view then this is okay. a completely white box testing uh, we will see <clears throat> and last one is testing related to changes and yeah i had got many questions from uh, software structure and uh, regression testing and retesting yeah this is very important this is what i was to, wanted to tell that that retesting regression regression testing is like uh, is a must question which we definitely yeah. get okay and uh, this is actually in the chapter number 4 also fourth chapter mm -hmm. so white box testing there we will cover in more detail but the other point which you need to know is that these all things can be done at all apply to every test levels you can test functional testing non functional testing white box testing and change related testing can be done at any test levels when we say test levels it is component testing component integration testing system testing and system integration testing at any of these levels you can perform any of these type of testings okay okay so this is one big concept which we should know this was the question which was asked in this sure. kind of testing can be done in which levels mm, all the levels yeah all the levels anyway you got it right only no? 100% yeah. getting it yeah okay <laughs> yeah so we already covered what is the meaning of functional testing the what the system should do so once you give an input what should you get as an output yes it is part of your black box testing also called as specification based testing this is another name for it specification based testing let's see because the points here uh, some these points are taken from the question papers only so that's why i also go through this even if i ex explain the concept the unit or system has a functional specification so functional specification is as a input 
input and test data generated from functional specification or models of the system. So this is also input, like uh, the data. Sometimes you pass the data, right? Like this one. So you give some data and you expect what should be the data you get back. And output check functionality. You you get the output and then based on that you see that what whether it is an accepted output or not, expected output or not. Okay. Yeah. So these are the things, but main thing, as I told, it is the system, what the system should do. And here, if you see, that is what is written. How the system should do one minute. Let me connect the charger. Okay. Mm, yeah, so these are just the example performance. If these, no one asked these questions in the exam. What is load testing this for all these things? So we have a completely different ISTQB certification, performance mm -hmm. testing. Okay, there they ask all these things in detail. I also give training for this one, so that's why I know. So it is performance testing, load testing, volume testing, stress testing, usability testing, maintainability, reliability, portability. Uh, Sometimes I have seen a question that these testing are part of which test type, like functional, non-functional, non white box, something like that they will ask. You just have to mark non-functional testing. That's okay. it. Okay. Okay. Maybe one difference I will give you. What is the difference between load testing and stress testing? Because this is a very interesting difference. It looks both look same only. Normally, any of your system will have your threshold, right? That if you have a website, these many number of people can log in at a time. So this threshold, if you are testing at these threshold levels, that how the system is behaving, this is load testing. You are loading it to the maximum extent and you're testing. But after this, if you load it, this is a stress testing. Mm -hmm. You want to test if you load more, what happens, how the system crashes, even if it is crashing, how it will crash. You want to see that. Whether you are able to recover it back, recover back or not. So break point. So this break point is a stress testing. Okay, above okay. the breaking point. So here the system will break. Here you will load completely, but the system will not break. That is the difference between load testing and stress testing. No way related to this exam, ISTQB foundation level exam. Okay. So this is what they're telling. In the performance testing, you check the speed. Load testing, you see the number of users. Volume testing, the expected volume, how many, like Monday, how many volumes you can get Tuesday or in a festival season, how many volume of people you will get. They will differ, okay. differ right? So they're based on that. Stress testing, I already told you, it's about the discovering the system breaking point. How many people you will load, that system will break. That yeah. is the stress testing. Usability testing means how a system, uh, how a user is going to use the system. How user friendly is your system? Mm. Right. For example, if I just give an example, suppose you have inserted your card in a wrong way in the machine. If it does not give you any output, no uh, message, then it is not a user friendly system, right? So yes. it should give you, it should interact with you properly, it means correctly. So that is a like meaningful output, feedback to the user, error message should come if you do something wrong. The navigation should be very user friendly. Accessibility is the term used for the people with uh, who has some, who are specially enabled. Okay. So for them, it is used. Like if some have, someone has a, some vision related issues, so that time you should have an option to increase the font of your system. If uh, someone is not able to see, in that case, uh, if you are using a system, then with a voice mechanism, they should hear it, something like that. So th that means for specially enabled pe uh, persons, this accessibility feature will come into picture. That is also part of the usability. How user friendly is the system? Okay. And again, uh, this one also, there is another uh, test levels, I think, uh, usability testing itself. They have one uh, syllabus where usability testing they cover, I mean, one certification itself. So there it is covered properly. Again, the same thing, portability, this is also non-functional. Portab portability means uh, suppose you have one chip here, okay? Then you have another, now in this, the software was there. Now you, you want to change the hardware itself. Mm -hmm. right? That time you have to see that. So this software will be portable from version one of the hardware to version two hardware. 
So that time you need to see that what all changes we need to do in this software. That is the portability stuff. Okay. Other example I gave you that uh, the mobile phone itself, the hardware is same, but you are changing two different software, software one and software two. So this is an example from software point of view. Okay, yeah. Then you go to reliability again, how reliable is the system, which all conditions and all you can uh, use this system. So when you perform testing, you perform it in, in certain environment, right? After you deliver it to the customer, you say that under these conditions, we have tested it. And it, if anyone uses this system under this condition, the system will work fine. It is reliable. <clears throat> yes. And then comes the maintainability. So like, <clears throat> If you get any defect in your product, how difficult it is to fix that. Or if you have any new system, sorry, new feature, how can you implement that new feature in your existing feature? How difficult or how easy it is? That is the part of maintainability. To correct the defect, to meet the new requirement, to enable maintenance and to adapt to a new environment itself. Like I told you, you know, from the here to this environment that you want to sit, how easy it is. That is all these things are part of maintainability. Yeah. If any defect comes, how are you going to fix the defect? If any new requirements come, how easy or difficult it is. In general, also, how are you able to maintain it? And if your environment itself changes, then uh, how you will take care of the maintenance. Okay. This is, uh, this one I will cover in chapter number four, okay, percentage, how to calculate the percentage of coverage. Okay. In chapter number four, we will cover, not now. So, uh, but this is part of the white box testing, takes an internal view of the software. In the white box testing, we take the internal view of the software. Okay. Now coming to almost to the last part. So what is the difference between retesting and regression testing? First, we will go through this point and then I will explain the concept also. Rerun of the test to check if the fix has been, since it is the fix is working now. Okay. So it is just for the confirmation. So you found one defect with one test case. You ran that test case. Now you don't find the defect. That is your confirmation testing. Okay. Yeah. When we go to regression test, rerun of our test on a already tested per that program. Maybe it is easy if we go through this. Suppose you had three test cases. Okay. In these three test cases, when you executed, you found these two test cases passing, but this test case is failed. So now what we need to do, we need to do the debugging activity. And what we do in the debugging, we analyze the requirement, <clears throat> analyze the requirement, then we get the root cause, and then we finally fix it. Yes. Once we fix yeah. it, that time we what we will do, we will run the test case C. So we found the defect with test case C, right? Now we are testing C. This is retest. Yeah. But if we see that while fixing, if we see that there is a possibility that it may also impact A and B test case, if we are testing those two test cases, then it is regression testing. Okay. Yes. Based on the impact. Another scenario here, they have covered both. There is another scenario that you have to test C. There is no doubt in that, that you have to test test case C, but you see that only B is affected. Then only regression testing, you will run, B, sorry, A. You will not do anything with B. You will not run your test case. B test case, you will not run. Still it is a, so this is retesting. This is regression testing. Here, no testing. You have not done any testing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so concept is clear, right? That yeah. based on the impact, if you perform testing, then it is a regression testing. Okay. So check for defects introduced as a result of change. So here we want to see that because of the change, if any new defect has come or what impact so yeah. in different, different words, they will try to make a statement. But at the end, you have to see that whether it is related to impact or what. So defect introduced as a result of change. So it is because of change, this is an impact. Okay. Change could be to the software or its environment. Uh, 
means anything can change na either the software can change or the hardware can change because of anything if the hardware changes again you have to run the test cases by seeing that okay if every all of the things are fine or not so that yes. is what they're telling or if, in any way if the software changes you have to analyze the impact and then you have to run your test cases okay both way and extent is governed by risk means to what extent you will perform the regression testing it totally depends upon the risk as i mentioned here no that there is a possibility we can test both also possibility that we run only one test case as a regression test based on the risk or the impact and if you already have the test suits with you then you can just run them again and again even if if you have time and everything then you can run all of the things again okay yeah and this test suits are slowly involved uh, evolved over time because initially you will have few test cases then after one release you will have more test cases after that again you will have more, some more test cases then you can mm -hmm. define the suits here right here you cannot you have very less test cases so uh, as the project progresses then you can have lot of number of suits here so if we want these things regression testing to perform then the test should be repeatable you have to write a test case in a way that every time you can use it or with some slight modification okay yeah but the okay. concept is this retesting and regression testing concept is this this you have to perform because you found a defect this you have to perform based on the impact analysis okay this is also very important maintenance testing i see question from this part also sometime okay uh maintenance testing is different from maintainability testing okay oh, okay both are not same that we have to be careful that maintainability testing is different maintenance testing is different maintenance testing can be done for the functional testing also but the maintainability is done for the non functional mm -hmm. okay so there is a difference between these two terms also now uh, what is the trigger for maintenance testing is the important question trigger mm -hmm. for the maintenance testing first we see the overview level the the application itself is changed or you are doing the migration or because the environment itself is changed or you want to retire your system in any of these four cases you go for the maintenance testing this is the first okay. level okay then we will go in detail so what are the triggers the application is modified you want to do the migration or you want or the environment is changed or the the software itself is retiring that time also you perform one testing and then you do the archiving of it just to know that at what stage you are keeping it okay yeah now how in the application in what all way the changes can happen obviously if you have some planned enhancement you had previously two features now you want to implement the third feature so this is a planned enhancement yes corrective changes you have two features but something went wrong you want to correct it now so this is another way emergency changes like hot fixes if you want to do yeah. or the environment change so environment change is anyways here like the operating system change like uh, in the we are using windows thing then you see right uh, the operating system will change they will update the operating system uh, from time to time and that time they will tell some of your drivers will not work so that will happen yes. then the database is changed hardware itself is changed commercial of the self software itself is changed i give you an example this one like commercial of the self you have to introduce now this is changed so now you have another software you have to in integrate that one so this also mm -hmm. will go under the maintenance testing okay okay migration means the platform to the another platform i already gave you two examples right from hardware to software or software to software also you can change and any change in the database so these are the part of these are the trigger for your maintenance testing so i am expecting that maybe you will get this trigger based questions uh, in the next time when you are writing because the question paper they will uh, change i i guess because the first time when you write now they will have different set and the second time they will have completely different set maybe okay. part of that okay 
<clears throat> so we will go a little bit more into uh, this detail, uh, especially into the impact analysis part. Okay. One minute. Sorry, I just forgot one thing. Impact analysis, yeah. <clears throat> so suppose you have a software here and if it is unchanged, fine. But if it is changed, then you have to analyze it. You have to analyze the changes. This is one way that what is changed, you should know. The second point, so this is a parallel activity. You know what is changed, then by seeing the change, you decide how big is your system, first of all. In that big system, how big is the change? Because of this change, what might be affected and how bad it may impact your system? Four questions, important questions from exam point of view also that when you do the impact analysis, you see that how big is your system, first of all, how big is your change? How is this change going to affect badly to your system? Once you analyze that, then you select the regression test cases, right? Once you know which part of your module in this, suppose you see that only this part is changed, then you will select the test case related to this part only, right? Why you need to change, uh, you need to select test cases for that. So that is what they have been told here. And then you will perform the testing. And if everything is fine, then this will become your software again. Yeah, okay. Okay, this is one part. The second part. Uh, <clears throat> you had previously one software, like this is the normal case, right? That you have a software. In that software, you do the change, right? Mm -hmm. So with time, it will do happen, this one. That time, what you do is, there are two ways. One is that, obviously, for these changes, you will write the new test cases. Suppose you, had, you have introduced one feature Z here. So for this feature, definitely you have to write new test cases, right? So that is what the new test cases you will develop. There is another possibility that because of this change, something might have changed in your own software. So uh, you will store all the data into the testware. For this testing, you might have stored all the data, right? Testware means everything what you use for testing, for testing version one. From this one, you will select some of the test cases that will be called as regression testing because based on the impact. Okay, okay. And then if you put here, uh, uh, this one and this one, so two inputs, new test cases, as well as the already existing test case you will use for testing your complete software. Once this mm -hmm. testing is done, again, you will store it in your testware. So that with time, if the next time if changes, the same cycle will continue. You have to write new test case and then you have to take the test case from regression testing. Okay. So this is the concept of your uh, maintenance system. Okay. This is all about the maintenance system. Okay. So maybe you can go through also these things uh, afterwards. Actually, in these slides, they have made everything very simple. In a very simple way, they have, I mean, if you see the ISTQB document, no, it's like every line and then very difficult to remember actually there. But here they have divided it into some good, in a very good way they have divided and represented. That's what I see. Yeah. Okay. So this is all about chapter number two. And uh, um, would you like to go through chapter number two? I, mean, I will go for break. You can also go for break now. Or if you want, okay. you can go through chapter number two and then we will go through the questions. Uh, we will take break and then come back and check. Yeah. Oh, okay, fine. Then uh, it's already nine, 10, so 15 minutes break we will take, okay? Yeah, yeah, okay. We have to have lunch also, right? We'll take yes. half an hour break then. Uh, yeah, let's finish your lunch and then get back. Yeah, fine then. So I will also ping here that I am in and you can also ping when you are in, okay? Let's see. Okay, yeah. I'll be back by 2.30 then? 2.30 is fine, yeah? Okay. okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you.
हाई किरण आई एम ऑल्सो बैक नाउ या जी यस this one just a minute i'm just trying to open a document again Yes, we did. Yeah, this one. Now we can. one page but it's fine yeah maybe these are the questions then we can go through it okay is not at test level in v model static testing is the first answer mm -hmm. yeah second question i cannot see it's uh it's gone out of the screen is it Okay, let me just then make it. Yeah. Right now. Okay. Not worrying about the levels of independence. Interesting. Oh, not this. Oh, this is. I think you need to scroll down. Okay. Interactive development model, which means integration testing is all iterations after the C is the answer. It's increasingly important on all the iterations after the first one. Mm, yes. Okay. In any life cycle model, there are several, uh, several characteristics of a good testing, which is not such a characteristic. For every development activity, there is a corresponding test activity. True. And in, uh, it inco incorporates independence. Yeah. V is the answer. <laughs> In any life cycle model, okay, that is done. Then, which of the following is not true of component testing? Um, uh, C is yeah. not true yes. is for integration testing. Integration. Then, test first approach is when test cases are prepared. Um, prepared after coding, no, before coding. C is the right answer. Right. Yeah, C is the right answer. Yeah. Then component integration testing. Between what is the interfaces between modules of component? Uh, A is the right answer. Yeah. And then what is the main purpose of integration strategies or component integration testing? Measure that all of the component are tested adequately within the new. To ensure that all of the component are tested adequately. Purpose of integration strategy for component integration testing. Yeah. Yeah, and the other one is then if we just see here, no, the seventh, uh, the C option to specify which order components are tested in. Mm -hmm. In which order we have to test them, right? Because uh, as also mentioned that we cannot test one component and the other component where we don't have any interface. Yeah. 
so that's why the order of the component is also important okay and um, if you see here again that um, to ensure that all of the component are tested adequately this is fine but looks like a big bang testing all the components at a time we should avoid yeah. that so if you see oh, c okay. and a both looks okay only but then we should go with c that the order is maintained properly okay so that's how it's very thin difference but then option c is the answer here what is, what is used to a replace missing calling component or module to facilitate component integration? What is used to replace a missing calling? A calling is a stub. <coughs> calling component or module to facilitate component integration testing. Okay, so that's also not right. So, Why? Calling yeah. and called. Yeah, calling will first now. Oh yeah, right. It's the driver calling. So it's a calling one. So driver is calling, stub is called. Called. Okay. From this point of view, we have to see. That's what I told you. If you are here, then this is calling. If you are here, then this function is called actually. Right. So that's why you should have in middle. And then if it is a calling function, that it is a driver. Okay. okay. Calling so, driver and called is the stub. Stub, but don't also go with just with the name. You also have to see that who is calling whom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so that's also important. Here it is fine with calling and call, it has come. Sometimes it will be calling, but you have to see who is calling whom. Uh, the missing function is calling to the call uh, to the function which you're testing, or the function which is testing is calling that function, uh, other function. Then also the definition will change. For example, what I'm saying is. So if you are here and if it is calling, then it is a stub. But if you are here and if it is calling, then it is a driver. Okay. And then if you are here, if, if you are at this place, if this function is called, even if the word is coming called, who is calling this function? This one, right? If this function right. gets called by a function, then this function is a driver. If I frame the sentence in different way, that the, the component under test is called by a function. Mm -hmm. then that function is a driver function. Okay. You're getting my point, right? Yeah, yeah. So the question can be different way. See, if uh, the missing component calling a component under test. So here calling word is coming, like the missing, uh, the missing component is calling a component under test. So here calling will come, but the component under test is called by a missing function. Mm -hmm. Both are driver only. If you go this way or you go this way. So you have to see yeah. that who is where. Maybe you can also draw it quickly in your exam and then just see that the wording is related to what. Okay. okay. They try to play a lot of with this. I have uh, multiple times I've seen. So, so these are two questions. There could be another two questions, right? For here. So yes. four combinations are of possible. So you have to see which combination they are uh, referring to. Maybe it will come here. Which of the following statement is correct concerning stubs and drivers mainly used in component and component integration testing? A is the right answer. A, <coughs> yes. Maybe 11th one then. Let's describe system integration testing collaboration between testers. C. One moment. Checking uh, that all the component function correctly. Okay, they are telling about system integration testing. Interface mm. between uh, D. D is the answer. Testing between the systems, yeah. Yes. Then for yes. system testing, the uh, uh, test basis includes the following except. So requirement, use case, risk analysis report, component. D is the uh, mm. basis include mm. except, yes. D that is for uh, component testing. Mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, which is incorrect about system testing. It is concerned uh, with the behavior of the system as a whole. It may involve structural test techniques. We should go function. Okay, you're asking about incorrect or is carried out with development in. Uh, it may employ structural test techniques. That is why it works. Always carried out by the no. No, D is wrong. D is wrong. It is not carried out by development. So, <clears throat> always remember system. Component testing and component integration testing. 
that is done by the developers yes okay so the option b here it may employ structural test techniques yeah, what are they trying to tell here uh, structural test techniques only they have mentioned right. like no even Why the policy, no no not no no don't get confused with that see they are talking about test techniques so in the structural testing or even if you are doing structural testing the test techniques are same no you can apply boundary value analysis there also uh -huh. And uh, your equivalence class also you can apply there. Same thing you can also apply here. Okay, okay. So it is not structural testing; it is structural test techniques. So, techniques. Okay. Or maybe it could be also like um, <clears throat> uh, statement coverage and decision coverage, right? Sometimes we may think that it cannot be used at system testing level because mm -hmm. I think we will see somewhere it is written that. In that document only it is mentioned that we we might do this type of testing at this level okay i will see that where is that statement coming there we will try to cover more of this part okay okay it will be coming in the at some places okay then 14th one system testing is testing the system function with other system end to end function the system as a whole so testing Uh, here I am confused between B and C. One minute, uh, end to end functionality of the system as a whole. I'm uh, checking that the system will perform business functions. C goes uh, well with this, right? Mm -hmm. So, again, business functions now it is always about acceptance testing, business level. Okay, okay, so this is this is why they wanted to confuse you. So Anyway, uh, uh, one more thing is whenever you see business operations, such type of words, you can relate it to acceptance testing. So here Please you can write it as a whole. Yeah. Okay. This is part of actually acceptance testing. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Which is untrue of user acceptance testing. The aim is to establish confidence in the system. Main purpose is to find defects in the you know, responsibility of the users. It may assist the system readiness for deployment and use. Untrue. So B, that is not the purpose of acceptance testing. Yes, 16. <clears throat> then uh, 16 operational acceptance testing may include all except disaster recovery, backup, store testing, data load and migrations, usability testing, operational acceptance testing, usability testing, data load. Usability testing because uh, first three Yes. Or part of operational acceptance. Yeah. So uh, just remember operations means all type of operations, these things like installation, uninstallation, recovery, hot site also, they could have used that word here. So yeah. all the, so usability will is not fitting. It is it's basically to test the how friendly the system is. So that's not operational. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, the main focus of acceptance testing is looking for defect, no, testing the system with other system, building confidence in the system. Users training in the use of system. Give users training in the use of system. Uh, building confidence in the system. Oh, that is actually, uh, system. actually uh, looking for defects. No, uh, I also told you one thing right previously. This answer is right. Okay, seventeen answer C is right because, but it is again based on this question. It is right. Mm -hmm. uh, if you remember one thing i told you that established but it goes goes good with d also <coughs> uh, normally it is also part of system integration testing yeah, b b testing the system with other systems yes it is b system integration testing yes you told uh, we will have a third party tool yeah so actually here means where I wanted to focus is that sometimes you, I also explained one thing that in the acceptance testing, we establish the confidence and in the other testing, we do, we build the confidence, but now you don't see a word established confidence, but still right. with the answer, the reason is that the other things are totally different at component integration, all these things, this is system integration testing, what we do here and mm -hmm. training and all these things are also not fit. So if you see here, the main focus when they say, oh, the best answer is C only. Yes. But suppose the last answer is that established confidence, then established confidence will become your answer. 
Okay. The difference is build confidence and establish confidence. In the acceptance level, we establish the confidence. Yes, correct. Just so always keep that as a high priority. Below to that is obviously building confidence. So that is also fine. But if you have both options, building confidence and establishing confidence, establishing confidence is the answer there. Okay. Beta testing. Beta testing. Bombay and independent test and at their own site. A is the right answer. Yeah. And maybe the last one. Yeah. And then consider the following statements here. So one uh, testing is performed by the system administrator. Customer mm -hmm. said one is true and uh, four or true. Mm -hmm. Uh, then alpha testing should ideally be performed by the potential users you said so it can be even the distance also so one four and five are true and one sorry one a c c c one four and five you said five potential users uh, could be uh, like testers like us right um, customers. No, potential customers means users only you know Potential customers, yes, yes. customers. So uh, when we are at alpha testing, it is done at our site only, no? our own site. Mm, correct, correct. C. Yeah, yeah, you are right. Actually, here, correct. This should be the answer. C only that uh, performed by potential customer. Yes, user or customer tester also could be one of. Them. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think yeah. This is the answer then. C is the answer, you're right about it. Fourth is, okay, fourth is also the answer, that's clear. I think you remember it, both of these statements were there. Yes, that's, uh, I remember because you told potential customers are also referring to us, uh, testers. Mm -hmm, correct. And then the first one, yeah. And also if you see here, right, somehow, like you, you by seeing here, you, you can directly make sure that that one is true, is there in everything? Three is false, and two is also almost false only. So yeah. it is repeating most of that. What are the things which is repeating more in false statements? So three, two, and one is true here. So remaining one should come somewhere. Yes. Okay. okay. Another way of validating it. It, this is not the right way, but uh, what, as I told, as for my experience, what I have seen is that whatever is maximum repeating, you know, so we saw another example. So whatever mm -hmm. is maximum uh, is a present here, there will be the answer. So just to cross check, you can, uh, sometimes you can use it. If you are very confident, it is fine that these are the things. But sometimes if you are not confident about any of these statements, no, one or two statements, sometimes you are not aware of it or something, then go with this option that, okay, what is there, where? Okay. So such type of questions, uh, getting, uh, making that correct as a, um, um, taking the correct answer is, um, I would say the probability is very high. You mm -hmm. can mark them, take even if you don't know, just by analyzing this. So these were some questions, 19 questions here uh, as of now. Okay. And then let's see if chapter number three will open here in this. Static analysis. Yeah. Static techniques. Static techniques. Yeah. Actually, somehow that file got corrupted and I'm not able to open it here in this PC. What to do about it? First two chapters slides are working fine. The third chapter, some problem is there. Mm -hmm. minute, let me just check if it is in my PC here. I don't know. All of a sudden, third chapter, fourth chapter, fifth chapter, they were throwing some problems. Oh, okay. I mean, they just got corrupted. I'm, I'm not sure why, but I also had some backup somewhere. I just want to see if we can open through them. Just check if it is possible now.
If you see, you know, if I just open this static technique, so I just see that somehow it's for crap. I don't know. I don't know what is the reason for that. This is coming fine. All other chapters, I have the same issue. I'm not sure why it is happening. What's the time now? It's it's two, it's going to be three in next six minutes. Then uh, I have actually another system. I do. Uh, you take break now. I what I do is that I try to open that system and then through email I will transfer it to my this system and see that if it still works here or not. Okay. Something is. I have to just find it out. Okay, there is another way also. Not necessary. You can copy from your uh, in the pen drive and then put it here. System, yeah, that's also there. Uh -huh. But I have another way also. That's just now I thought of using it. I have all the slides here, so I can also directly go with it. So very big chapter. Let's go with third chapter. Were you part of any time development activities? No. 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 Okay. Always testing. Or manual tester. Okay. Okay. No, because uh, if you have any time worked on development, no, then it is very easy to cover this uh, statement coverage, decision coverage, yes, all these type of concepts. But anyway, oh, okay. if you not work, then also not a problem. We will practice some questions there. <clears throat> So when we go to static testing techniques, right? So here we already know that normally we do it on documents and at the coding level also we can do, but at coding level, we can have both the things like the, um, we can have both static testing and dynamic testing at the coding level. But until then we, uh, we should have, <clears throat> this is what I was telling. So until code is available, we can have only static testing, but okay. once code is available, both dynamic and static testings are possible. Yeah. <clears throat> so keeping that in mind, let's proceed further here. So this is what they are telling here. So even if you are checking the document, okay, uh, you can still have a tool. For example, just a very simple example, if you have to give the word document, the word document will have a tool engine running in the backside, right? Where it will take, give you the spelling mistakes. Yes. Okay. So that is again a tool, which is giving all the mistakes. You can have a little bit advanced version of tool where you put your word document and then each places it will tell you uh, that in which line and all you had a problem it will give you in a form of a report that is actually a static analysis tool so what we do here is that the code is there that code in, uh, normally we write a code in an editor only any kind of editor so this through this editor we will we will uh, give as an input to this static analysis tool and this tool will finally give you the defect list okay so that is how static analysis tool will be used by the developers is it yes it is used by the developers and static testing is also mostly done by the developers only but only when we have a requirement the requirement in uh, the requirement analysis or requirement mm -hmm. review is done by the tester okay? okay and rest of the time it is with the developers only uh, yeah <clears throat> so what all things we can review in the or what all things we can cover in the static testing we already know any type of work product which is of type documents yes any work product which is of type documents so looking for defects in work product documents documents like requirement design specification user stories epic source code even the test plan you can review once the planning is done no it goes for a review if it is right yes. or not then test specification, test case, test script, user guides, also web pages, all of these things can be a candidate for your review. Okay. So when you see web page, do not get confused whether web page can be reviewed or not. Yes. So the font size and all those stuff, the spelling mistakes on your web pages, color combination, what you have used, all these things can be verified using a static testing. Okay. So test plan. The specification test case all these things 
anything which you have as a document and as an output can be reviewed. Okay. Next. So we also saw two things, right? That one is defect and one is failure in the previous concepts. Then here, if we see static testing finds the cause of the failure. Okay. That means defect. Yeah. And dynamic testing finds the failure itself. Okay. So these two concepts mm -hmm. also we should know properly. Means uh, they can twist in this part. Then uh, if we use static testing, we can find the defects early. So this is clear. So if we find defects here, then that means we are finding the defects early. But if you only have the dynamic testing, then after this step only, you can find it out. So it's a little bit late in your process. Okay. So this is it. You are able to see complete screen or how is it right now? Or only the this page? I can see. Uh, you have not maximized the screen, but I can see it. Okay, but you can see two documents in the same screen right now. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Maximize it also in that case. Now, this is the problem when I am maximizing it. I don't know why it's taking all three documents. Ah, uh, understood. Great. This is the problem if you make single page. Okay, now we are in the third number. This is what we were discussing, right? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so defects are cheap to fix. If this is the case, if you find any defects in the static testing, it is cheap to fix because we are finding it early, right? So if you find defects early, they are cheap to fix. Here, if you find. Yeah, I had got a question from here. Like static testing, we find cause of failure, and dynamic testing, we find the failure themselves. This was a question. Okay, this was a question. So, yeah, this is what is mentioned here then. Yeah. You have noted that down the questions also, or what? <laughs> no, no, no. I It's there in my mind. I gave it on this 8th of April only, so I still remember them partially. Oh, oh Feb. Okay, okay. Yeah, actually, that's what I mean. I can share this uh, PPT with you because if you see the PPT, you know, direct questions are coming from it. The way they have used. So there, as I mentioned, the, the PPT is made from the ISTQB syllabus plus from the question answers. Mm -hmm. The wording they have used here is like, you will directly come in the exam or were directly there in the exam, the same wordings. I just wanted to ask you, like, uh, first attempt, uh, is it, uh, I don't know if it's a myth or what. People usually say, like, the second attempt when you take it is uh, going to be a little tough. Uh, it's not like that. It's just about concept only at the end. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Even I, I thought the same, and that's the reason I approached you, because if the concepts are clear, then uh, it doesn't really matter. Yes, uh, tough in the sense, uh, like uh, I told you, you know, in the dynamic testing and static testing, you got a question that uh, differentiate between static and testing. I mean, so who is responsible for static testing? Who is responsible mm -hmm. for dynamic testing? You are not going to get that question again, but mm -hmm. you will get question a little bit in depth. That is the what is the there in the dynamic uh, debugging. Sorry, uh, okay. static, uh, this uh, testing and debugging. So inside they will go more and then they will ask you the question inside uh, of that. So that way it may become a little tricky, but uh, again, it's again a concept. And if you know the complete concept, whether the easy question comes or the little bit tricky, it's same, but they are not going to trick you with all the questions. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And uh, the other part is that um, uh, the first time when you're writing, right, most of the people write first time and uh, the first time questions are available in the websites here, there means for multiple places, you can jot down and the first time questions you will have. But the second time, whatever questions are there, no, they are not there in the websites and all, most of the places. Okay. The second question paper. So that's, that is another thing that sometimes when you go through all the question answers, everything, um, uh, like 30 percentage you will get in the exam itself. But in the, when you go for second attempt, Maybe all the questions will be new or something which you have not seen. Yeah. 
but if you know the concept you can answer them i mean that way it would be tricky if people are telling okay okay yeah okay so yeah these three points if you remember for static testing this is enough that finds the cause of the failure finds them early defects are cheap to fix dynamic testing means uh, they find the failure themselves and uh, finds them late and they are expensive to fix yeah and these techniques are complementary to each other it's not like that if you do static testing you should not perform dynamic testing or if you are doing the dynamic testing in your organization then you should not do static testing they are complementary because they find uh, the objective is to find bugs only but different types of bugs yes this is clear benefits of static testing also important benefits uh, uh, here that if you use static testing it is very clear that you can do the testing early so early defect and detection and correction technique it is defect detection and correction development productivity improvement how it results in development productivity improvement right so <clears throat> <clears throat> how it increases the productivity first of all so if you suppose you don't find the bug here then the mm -hmm. your development life cycle will increase right because one more cycle you go for the bug fixing but yeah. if you find almost all the bugs then same time only everything will be done so that way it will uh, like uh, increase the productivity of the development team okay okay reduce development time cycle it's clear just now i explained reduce testing time and cost so same thing if you find here defect only one document you have to change if you find defect here you have to and the de because defect was introduced because of this then three four documents you have to change yes okay. lifetime cost reduction so similar way each cycle if you reduce the time the overall cycle time will reduce or all the development time will reduce if you do it properly and then towards the end you will have fewer defects mm -hmm. no. and then improved communication because you are discussing with the complete team member so normally when everything is going right <clears throat> we don't learn more but when something goes wrong to identify what go went wrong we have to explore a lot of things so that is the time we actually learn and yeah. uh, it also helps us in improve uh, improving the communication with the team members and all right so this is one point and identify defects not easily found dynamically this is also a right statement sometime when we see this statement in the exam we think that this is a random statement it is not right for an example like if you have a dead code or suppose you have a pointer which is defined but not released this type of thing you cannot find it in dynamic testing okay so these type of defects are very easily can be very easily found in the static testing suppose one variable you have defined and that variable is never used in your project this type of the defect cannot be found be found in the dynamic testing but static testing they will find it out okay so these are some of the the things here okay so let's move to the next one this is also a very important topic the type of defects we find in the static testing yes so requirement here also. here also yeah mm -hmm. you remember the question the like any format like how... i think uh, design defects insufficient algorithms or database structures high coupling low cohesion if there was any other option like all of the above <laughs> In that i'm not sure but uh, no no sorry uh, this coding defects i uh, which one can cannot be found you uh, during dynamic testing but it can be found using static testing that was uh, it is matching with the c uh -huh. so variables defined values undefined variables that are declared but never, yeah i remember this third one third one right yes so this is the page and uh, if you remember this one question for sure you will get from this part okay again also okay. not may not be from this one again but mm. maybe from something different okay so the, because they will take your data and they will see that which question paper you got and uh, they will make sure that you don't get the same question paper so they will make sure that so that's why right. 
so you will not get this one and yeah <clears throat> so requirement related defects like inconsistencies ambiguities contradictions omissions inaccuracies and redundancies for example mm -hmm. inconsistency means somewhere you have written something and other place you are writing means timing some place you are telling that within 10 seconds it should come in other place you are writing within 20 seconds the same thing should happen so it's the inconsistencies as well as contradictory right yeah ambiguity means if you are reading some requirement but you are actually not getting the sense of it what we have to test there so mm -hmm. that is the ambiguity Om omission means some line is there but the timing itself is not mentioned so something is missing in your requirement redundancy means in one place the requirement is written again it is written in another, another place same requirement so that is a part of redundancy. So all these type of things you can definitely. So anything which you can see it in document, right? Or an editor are part of static testing. Now design related defects. So anyway, if you remember this one, you can very easily know that, okay, all these things are part of your static testing only. Whatever it's coming there. Then uh, design defects like insufficient algorithm or database structure. Okay, high coupling and low cohesion. Yeah, this is one point I will explain you. Uh, right now i'm not getting what is that uh, it's something related to like how how your functions are coupled together okay so they should not be highly coupled means one function is that second function is that third function is there then i means how they're coupled together uh, it's like you can we easily uh, 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 like uh, divide them or it is very complex structure, something like that. So I will give you this explanation. But uh, anyway, what you need to know is that high coupling and low cohesion is also part of the static testing. How your components are interacting with each other, actually. That's the thing here. Okay. Then uh, coding defects, they yeah, are variable related, anything unreachable code, duplicate code, declaration. So these type of defects you can find in static testing because you cannot see the variable in uh, dynamic testing. So you cannot also find them, right? You want me to explain these things like uh, variable? No, no, no. I, I get it. Yeah. So deviations from the standards. Okay. Deviation from the standards means when you use C, you will have this MISRA guidelines, right? If you know. So normally we have. Oh, all, yeah. There is a guideline called MISRA guideline. Just giving you an example that they will tell. Inside one function, you cannot have more than 10 lines of code in one function. Okay. Or they will tell in one function you cannot have more than 15 lines of code or they tell that the variable length the length of the variable cannot be more than 32 characters mm -hmm. so these are like coding related deviations where we can find this using a static testing you know, with dynamic testing we cannot find that how many lines of code was written for that function that we cannot know yeah so this is like a lack of adherence to coding standard what I see you know, in exam, they will not ask you this one. They ask you the things in the brackets. Okay, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so normally we normally we leave the things which are in bracket and that's what they ask. So that's what I have also noticed. So maybe we have to focus. That's why I was focusing here. The high coupling and low cohesion. Uh, if it comes, it is a design defect and can be found by static testing. Okay. Then interface related like different units of measurement used by the calling system than by the call system uh, unit mm -hmm. in one function it is giving the values in the form of suppose kilometers okay and the other function is accepting in the form of a meter so if it gives uh, one uh, meter one kilometer it is telling but it is taking as one meter it's wrong right so that's how we have to see that how the other function is giving so that's how and this is also i have seen multiple times buffer overflow Okay, this is a security vulnerabilities that buffer overflow happens. Buffer overflow will happen that time the system will crash and that time the the cracker the hackers or someone can take advantage of the data. Okay. So this is related to security vulnerabilities. So you can find security vulnerabilities in a static testing or the very simple thing in the document that if you have any gaps in the traceability. Mm -hmm. That also we can find it out, right? By reviewing, we see that which requirement is not linked still. Right, yes. So these all are the uh, defects of uh, static testing. 
Ajit, just, just give me a minute. I'll close my window. There is some construction work going on next to my house. It's a little yeah. disturbing to me. Okay. Yeah, I'm back. So what do you think? Did you went anything anywhere wrong in this question or you had two questions correct right here or you mark this question right? Oh, one minute. But oh, I, out of five, I just got two. So I don't know. Did I go wrong in this or was it right? Not sure. Okay. So I hope that uh, if you have these things in mind, then it will be it will be easy this time to clear. Yeah. So dynamic testing means uh, you have means they will the whenever they will ask you this question, what is the what type of defects you can find in static testing and what type of defects you can find in dynamic testing? Just see that whether the code is executing there or not. Mm -hmm. So that is the best way of uh, doing it. Normally, people think that buffer overflow will happen when the code is running that time. Okay, it will happen that time, but you can find it out in the static testing itself because when the buffer overflow will happen is that when you are utilizing the memory but you are not releasing the memory so over a period of time the memory will be filled and then you will have a buffer overflow related issue so if if you have used the variable and if you are not uh, means uh, releasing it these things you can definitely find it in the static testing okay now another important question is from this topic. Oh, I had three four questions from here. Yeah, so the, the this we need to know very carefully, and I also have one screenshot for that. The problem is not able to uh, open that. Okay, there is one page I think in that from yesterday also I saw uh, one person got two questions from that one page itself. Mm. Okay, so that is how it is. Uh, one minute, I have just turned on my fan here. Hmm. Okay. I remember the question here. They asked like uh, author is used in uh, walkthrough method or not. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Awful, awful I know that, that uh, I know the question which they will ask from here actually it would have been very good if um, I can open I made a table okay? okay in that table it is mentioned author will be involved in which process scribe will be in which process tick only tick mark one in ta one table only everything is mentioned who is responsible for what yeah okay so from there only you get one or two questions uh, every time Unfortunately, I'm not able to show that, but I will share with you. Uh, you just share your email ID. Okay. I open my another system. No, I will give you three documents. You see that if you have those three documents itself, I think you can mark 10 to 15 questions, I guess. Okay, great. <clears throat> so, yeah. So type of review. Yeah, this is actually very tricky. It's very easy. And at the same time, it's very tricky also to answer these type of questions. Okay, let's see that if I can explain you these concepts clearly. So the type of review goes from a very informal to a very formal way. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it totally depends like the degree totally depends upon like how mature your system is or your development life cycle process is whether you have legal requirement or not. Because if you have a legal requirement, then you need a very formal process, right? Regulatory requirement, very formal process. If you yeah. have to go for audit and all, then also you should have a very formal process. So what type of project you are working on, based on that, you will decide the type of review. And the review varies from informal review to the very formal. So this is informal walkthrough is little formal than this one. Technical review is the degree of formality is increasing. And then finally, you will have the inspection. Okay. okay. When you say, uh, I will just give you an overview and then we will go through each of this in the next four slides. So informal review, when we say that is uh, like, uh, just with your friends, you are getting it reviewed. Mm -hmm. 
okay like buddies or uh, like this are the words which are used in the syllabus we will see walk through means what you do is you call for a meeting here you don't call for any meeting or anything you just tell your friend please come let's have a just please check if something is wrong in it or not and they will give you some input and based on that you will fix it that's it that is the informal review no okay. meeting nothing walk through means it's a little bit formal as i said so you at least call for a meeting no other preparation mm -hmm. you just call two or three experts or one expert from each domain and you tell them that see i have written these things this is my first line of the code this is my second line of the code this is my third line of the code this is the logic i have used you are explaining it to all the people then people will give you suggestion there and then in that meeting okay okay so this is a walk through technical review is further formal for formal review than that and here what we do is that uh, here we have we do some preparation before coming to the meetings here we don't do any preparation here the author will call and then he will only lead everything but here you will have a proper process and here you will also have some checklist in all of this process you will not have checklists okay, okay. here you will have a checklist checklist you understand right that there will be a document where it will be mentioned what to do the questions will be mentioned that is a checklist yeah. so here you will use checklist in all other process you will not use the checklist now let's go into detail of this uh, thing informal reviews okay so now buddy check or peer programming peer reviewing is part of a informal review this okay. is so i have seen the question uh, in the exam that uh, uh buddy check is part of which review informal for and uh, like walk through or all these things so it is part of a informal review just this word they used okay so this is actually performed by the colleagues no formal process with the name we should know that there is no formal process next mm -hmm. result may be documented maybe not be optional if you want to document something you can otherwise not required no meeting and varies in usefulness depending upon the reviewer it totally depends whom you have called for review yeah okay it totally depends upon that and commonly used in an agile process it's a very fast process so they say that if depending upon the project again they use it in the um in the agile project what is the main purpose here so this is very important that detecting potential defects this is what will be there in all other stages also solve minor issues quickly okay small small issues if it is there then it is better to go for your informal review okay so you may get question in this direction also that uh, why you go for formal testing informal testing to save money that is also one of the reason okay cost and to solve minor issues this is the least expensive way of conducting your review okay because based on the cost also they will ask question in the exam that uh, in which type of review process the very less cost is involved so it is informal because if you call for expert and all then it is more expensive right so that's why yes so going to the next one now so types of review next part that is walk through here so previously you know that there was no meeting now obviously it is little bit formal so meeting will be introduced but it is led by the author himself may take form of dry run or scenarios as i told you no the, the author will come and he will represent that dry run he will just go through this is what i did this is what i did like this i did or some scenario he will give this is is my logic like that and people will correct if necessary so this is but it is led by the author itself Okay, author okay. here would be the developer. Uh, developer. We can say that. Uh, yes, yes, developer only. Okay. Whoever is producing the document is the author. Okay. Not only developer, uh, it could be tester also. For example, you have written your test case. Hmm. Now you want people to go through your test case, so you will tell that this is how I have written the test case. This is what I am testing here. This is what I am testing here. Then someone can tell you, no, no, you can do it in this way, or you can make your test case in this way. So like that, it's not necessary developer. it's just an author it could be developer or tester but the person okay. who has written this who has built this uh, work product okay may take form of a dry run or scenarios so this is fine then individual preparation is optional so if you see previous one 
there there was no uh, preparation here also there is no preparation but it is optional checklist is also optional okay yes. scribe or script maybe uh, if you go back there was no script over there here there is a script what they do is that they write the issues okay means the, the developer is the developer or tester they are they are presenting it right and the technical experts are telling the comments all these things will be written by the script here okay so until previously script was not there from here onwards script will be there in every place like walk through and then technical uh, review inspection inspection all the three places you will have him but you will not uh, have them in the uh, informal review okay, okay. So you remember that from here it is included then potential defect logged and report optional so reporting is optional here so may vary from informal to very formal so it is like one step ahead from informal it is little bit formal here okay, okay. so main point what is here is that what if you have to just remember that author is leading the meeting here and script is mandatory okay. only these two things okay then again finding defects improving products alternative implementation and evaluate the standards so people will while going through it they will see that if the format is correct all these things the people will look into it and provide the comments so all these things we can correct in this stage okay this is clear now this yes. com complete part no you will get two questions and getting wrong here is very easy yeah okay <laughs> Because the small small things, the script, so it is there in the, it is not there in the previous days. From here onwards, everywhere they will be there. Meeting. I think I went wrong in this question. They had asked in which review a script is not required, and I think I chose walkthrough because uh, I thought it is walkthrough. But now I understand. Okay, yes. it was in. It was a very first run informal review. Is where we don't have script mandatory. Okay. Yeah, but here it is mandatory. Uh, as I told you, you know all these things. Whatever you see here, no, I have it in one table itself. So no need to go through all of these slides. Also, I will share that with you. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. Now you go to technical uh, review. So now you always have to compare between the stuff. So here, optional meeting ideally led by the trained moderator. So there the meeting was led by the author. Okay. But okay. now it is little bit one more one step ahead. So that's why here the meeting is led by the the trained moderator. Moderator is the lead. We can say that. The moderator could be a lead also here. Yes. Okay. Means someone experienced person, not the author. Okay. And if if in option you get that or in the question if you get that uh, meeting led by the author, then it is walk through. Walk through. Yeah. Because in the first stage there is no meeting. So that is the next formal one. So there it is led by the author itself. Now it is more formal. So it is led by a moderator, any experienced person. Okay. Pre-meeting preparation by reviewer. So preparation will be done here. In the previous stage, there is no preparation. For last two stages, there were no preparation. Yes. Technical review, they will come with the preparation only. Okay. okay. But they don't use any checklist here. So until now, there is no checklist. Even for technical review, there is no checklist. In the next stage, they will use the checklist. So for checklist, you should link with formal review. Okay. Sorry, inspection, inspection. Okay. All right. Inspection after this inspection. Right? Yes. And also one more point. Until now, the uh, logging of defect was optional. But now in this stage, you have to log the defects. Okay. Yeah, Scrape is again mandatory. Okay. And it includes peers and the technical experts. Okay. So what makes a difference between walkthrough and a review is that, that here you, you have a meeting which is led by the trained moderator. You have to have a pre-preparation pre or before coming to meeting, you should have a preparation. You log the defects. So these are the things which makes it different from the walkthrough. Okay. And main purpose for the discussion and making this decisions. So discussions and you want to make the decision. Again, alternative implementation is there, finding defects, solving technical problem of the team. So see, until next stage, 
maybe we can solve the technical problem but here because we are involving the technical experts so that is what we expect for okay okay so now the differences are getting clear right the small small differences yes, yes. now if you see here an inspection so as i mentioned somewhere you see checklist so some rules or checklist they will definitely use so again it is the same thing it is led by the moderator it is still same this mandatory script is mandatory here in all the three stages they are mandatory only okay mm -hmm. pre meeting preparation obviously if you are doing in the previous stage obviously you will do here also because it is more formal right so yes. everything what is making it different is that this checklist checklist and rules yeah this is just an extra point that author cannot be any of these things he cannot be the leader of meeting he cannot be the scribe here author okay same mm -hmm. okay again this is same peer examination by the experts will be done here all the roles will be defined okay this is one thing Oh, uh, and again you can go one more step and then again take the like you can gather some data here try to gather some data okay and yeah this is very important entry criteria and exit criteria so normally in the previous all stages we have never used entry criteria and exit criteria entry criteria and exit criteria with respect to uh, review uh, this this thing is that um, what all documents you should get to start your review done Okay. That is the entry criteria, and when you will stop. Like checklist based is there. No, suppose you have ten questions in your checklist. Once you are done okay. with all the ten questions, you will stop your review process. So that is your exit criteria. Okay, okay. And you will follow a very well defined process. No violation here. The complete process has to be followed. Okay, and the reader, reader. I don't know what is the role of reader, but until now. all the stages reader were not there but here reader is an optional person yeah okay. so if you see the first process that is the informal one there was no scribe that is an exception and here if you see in the inspection you have a reader here which is not there in any other places okay yeah yeah so these are the things and then main purpose finding defects and prevent future defects also Okay. until now we never had future defects okay so it comes only with inspection so because everything is done here so they want to see that the future defects are also prevented okay finding defects is uh, for every review uh, process yes. that is the uh, uh, basic objective correct because this is the main purpose review. of review activity yes yeah okay so this is how here but here you are solving the technical problem in this case in the technical review and here you are more focus on alternative implementations and standards yeah okay some general comments here so you don't need a peer reviewer in the informal review but in all these cases you need a peer reviewer or technical experts mm -hmm. that's why they just made a general comment just remember that that here and all you need it okay now this process also sometimes they ask question based on process did you get any question on this topic that what is the process no 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 i did not get okay sometimes they ask the uh, path means order uh, correct order yeah yeah so first i mean it is quite easy first you will have planning then you have to initiate the review other word for initiate review is kick off meeting mm -hmm. kick off meeting okay kick off meeting that is so initiate the review kick off then each in who who are participant of review and review you know they have to perform the individual review suppose two reviewers are there then both of them have to do it independently because it is not a walk through it's a uh, individual review preparation they will do then they will find the defects they have to communicate that defect mm. okay and they, okay. then uh, they may they can have a meeting here they can also analyze that defects they will take the perspective of author also why he has done in that way and then the author will be fixing it and then again reporting it to the individual reviewer and then this process okay. will yeah i think this might come this time <laughs> last time it did not come correct correct because last time you got the uh, the top one no 
तो yes. yeah, but from top one definitely one question because the last time you got for uh, script right now you they may ask you something different yeah script and uh, author they asked that i think that was the only question which i got right here uh, i was sure that author is used in uh, walk through okay okay <laughs> then fine so yeah you can expect a question from there too so different type of review techniques you can apply checklist based uh, uh, we can see it in uh, next chapter also but here also checklist based means what you will have a checklist where the all the questions will be mentioned there should not be any spelling mistake there should not be any undeclared variables something like that so based okay. on that they will read the question and they will review it ad hoc means nothing is given they will just give you like i will give you just one document this document and i will tell you find all the mistakes which is possible from your end so you will do ad hoc you will go up down see what is the problem and all like that okay and dry run i have explained you dry run means like walk through so uh, there will be a document you will go from top till bottom to see that if something is wrong in it or not here it is complete is up it is like ad hoc you can do whatever you want and just give us the defects that's it so these are some of the techniques which are applied through individual preparation activity so we saw right here that we have this individual preparation so when yeah. you do this that time you can apply any of these techniques okay okay so this also you have to remember uh then there are two or again two different type of reviews here role based and perspective based what is the difference is that role based means you will become the uh like you can become a manager and review based on the manager or you can become the customer based on based on customer role you will review the document or you can become a user and can i i can't hear you properly i think there is that is you can hear me you cannot hear me properly uh no there was some disturbance now i can hear you now you can hear me no okay fine so what i was telling can you can you please tell me like role based yeah yeah so role based means uh, like you uh, the reviewer has to act like a uh, like a customer or like a user okay then okay. he has to review the document okay okay maybe you, when you have interacted with customer or from the previous uh, experience you know that this is how the customer looks into the document or to the product so that way you have to also review your document okay, okay. prospective based means like if the product is used by the child by the young generation by the old people then from that perspective we have to review our documents or okay. product so that is the difference here now we come to this part again you can expect one question from here okay who is the author author is a person who produces the document or who prepares the document could be developer could be tester yeah anyone what is the role of a manager manager determines the review types Mm -hmm. plans the review activity allocates time for the review and determines if review objectives are met or not okay determines we need to know the difference between manager and the facilitator rest all are okay you will remember it but the confusion is between these two okay so this manager will be at the top level who will define all these things who will plan the review activity and determine what type of review you need to do he will allocate the time also and he will also determine the ob review objective but facilitator is a person who will be involved in the project he will be running the review activities he will be the mediator suppose uh, the developer or tester starts uh, argue there is a argument between them then the facilitator will tell that okay what is right what is wrong mm -hmm. and the success of the review depends upon the facilitator he will check that whether all the process is followed or not followed like that okay okay Maybe manager or tech lead you can say that way also okay okay and the same word for the instead of facilitator we use the word moderator okay 
Oh, both both the roles are same. Same. Yeah, you can use okay. the word facilitator or moderator. So this is also important. In the exam, I have seen they have used the word moderator also. What is the role of the moderator? So success of the review depends upon the moderator, not manager. Okay. So I mean, normally people get confused between these two roles. Other roles are very simple. Author is the person who is uh, producing the document. Reviewer or inspector, huh? This one. Reviewer or inspector. So we have to know this. So they are the person who review the document and identify the defects. Fine. And then scribe or recorder. Scribe or recorder, as the name says, they will record the or document the issues. Okay. Normally, it is done by the tool only nowadays. No one is writing the defects. Okay, so it's done by the tool. In the tool only, we log the defects. This is clear. All the roles here. You can definitely yes. expect one question from here. This is what my feeling. But you may get question from here also. Because last time you didn't get right, so no, I did not get. Oh, okay, this time. I think this is the last question. We have something more. Okay. <clears throat> success factor, organizational success success factor means what the organization should do that this review process is a success for us. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's based on organization we are thinking after that we will think based on the individual like as an individual what you can contribute and here as okay. an organization lens like organization how they should do it so each review has clearly defined objective so as a manager you should tell the people that what is the objective of this review okay. each review each review will have different objectives right so that objective should be clear like and then you have to select the review type suitable to that objective okay. okay first you have to take the objective based on the objective you have to select the review type and you can use any of the techniques review techniques like checklist based role based prospective based ad hoc anything any review test technique also you can use and checklist addresses risk and are up to date. You have to also make sure that you have prepared a checklist, but they are also up to date or not as organizational level. Okay. As an organization, you also have to make sure that participants have adequate preparation time. It should not be like during the release, we are just telling that please complete the review and then giving a lot of review and just for the process compliance point of view which is normally happens in an organization but as an organization they should think that we should get enough time okay and if it is a large document we should divide it into small small parts and then do the review activity okay so review schedule with notice it should not be like the review is there and uh, now only we are telling in uh, half an hour please join for the meeting for review People should get enough time with a proper notice so that they can also prepare, they can go through the document and then come to the review activity, the review meeting. Yeah. And management should support for the proper review. The management uh, normally, the main concern of management is that we should get the software ready. That's it. The most of the time that is the case. And they, uh, they don't provide proper time for the review activity in that case. Okay, so that should not yeah. be the case. So these are the points here, the organizational success factor. But this is quite simple, right? I think divided into chunks, this may look a little different, but yeah, this is also one of the objectives. Okay. Yeah. Rest all are anyways normal objectives only, right? So nothing to buy hard there. So people related success factor. How? Uh, as a manager, we have to see that we are involving right people for the review. Right? Whoever has some expertise in those features or previously worked, spent enough time, we have to call them as a for the review. Testers are also valued reviewers, especially when it is a requirement that 10 testers are also a valid reviewer. Mm -hmm. And uh, as an individual person, we have to pay attention to the dedicate adequate time and attention. So normally what happens is even if management gives one day time, 
So what happens is that during the last one hour only, we try to complete the review activities. That's how is normally it works. But then we have to see that if it's a big document, we divide it into different sections and all, and then see that we utilize the time adequately. Yeah. And <clears throat> when we get the defect, it should be welcomed. It should not be, mm -hmm. should not think, take it as a criticism. It should be welcomed. Sometimes we see a very small mistake someone has found, but they have found, right? So better to fix it instead of thinking why we are finding such a small mistakes in things and all. So that's what it should be welcome. People issues and psychological aspects are dealt with. That's what. So it's like a testing only, right? So how the people yeah. will take and all those stuff should be considered here. <clears throat> Training given in review techniques. So if you have different, different type of, uh, especially when you go for inspection, right? Normally not everyone can go for inspection. So they tell that you can do uh, inspection only if you have a formal training on it. Okay. okay. That is one thing which I have seen. It's also a practice in my organization. Okay. Small chunk review to add. Uh, yeah. So this is one more point, like to keep the concentration level up. We have to divide the documents into small, small chunks. <clears throat> this was also a part of uh, organization related success yes. factor, I think. As an organization, they also think that they should not give a very big uh, review document. But even yeah. if it is given, then as an individual person, we have to see that we are not reviewing all of these things at one stretch itself. Right. So emphasis is on learning and the process improvement. So that means if you, even if you find a bug or whatever, the main objective is to improve your process. Okay. So these are the points here. <clears throat> when you use a static analysis tool, these are some of, some of the type of defects which you can find. Okay. So this is also an important type of question only like insufficient use of variables. Insufficient use of variables, then infinite loops. We will see some examples here also. After that, unreachable code, inconsistent component or interface. If like one time it is working, one time it is not working. So that type of inconsistency, stability also. Overlay complex structures. So as I mentioned, no, one of the standard is that inside a function, you cannot have more than 10 lines of code. Suppose someone yeah. has written 40 lines of code. It is very complex function then. So we have we, that the static analysis tool will detect that how many lines of code you have written in an inside a function. Okay. Programming standard violations. For example, I gave you an example that <clears throat> the variable, the, the name of the variable cannot exceed more than 32 um, letters. Mm -hmm. okay. So if it is more than 32 letters, then this tool will can find that out. As a human being, it is very difficult to no? each variable to check if it is crossing 32 letters or not. But tool can find it out easily for us. And any syntax related violation. So you might have seen during your college days when you are doing a compilation for C program, it will give you the syntax violation errors and all. Yeah. Yeah. So the compiler can also act as a static analysis tool. Okay. okay. Compiler, you uh, remember that word? Uh, could be a question that the can compiler be used as a static analysis tool? The answer is yes for that. Okay. I actually used to get confused a lot between static testing and static analysis. Static testing has two parts. One is manual testing, one is automated testing. Manual testing is your review activities. Yeah. Automated testing is your static analysis tool. Via mm. static analysis tool. So static testing has two divisions. One of the division is this one. Okay. You are right. It is uh, many uh, people get confused because they use the same word, no static analysis, both the place. Only here tool comes into picture. That's why. Yeah. Some examples here. So two examples are here and with that, the chapter number three will end. Static analysis by tool, infinite loops. 
So if you read this, like suppose this is a diagram, we are doing a static analysis on it right now. We are not running the code, right? It is static. We are going from top to bottom. So here we have given x is equal to 20 equals to 20. And then we come here, we check that while x is greater than zero. Mm -hmm. That means x is 20 only. And here we have x is greater than zero only, right? So it will come yeah. here. Then this loop will continue because now the x is not updating anywhere, na? value of x. Yes. Yeah. So this is a continuous loop. That means you are not executing this part. So this is an infinite loop. Mm -hmm. Now let's see another example of dead code. How a dead code looks like. So here they're telling if you are over 17, mm -hmm. then you can drive fine. If you are over 16, so you are in this branch because you are over 17, right? That means you are always, you are anyways over 16 also. Yeah. Then you cannot go to this else part. You will go to the true part only. So this part will never execute if you go inside, if you come inside this. Mm -hmm. okay. And this is a dead code because you cannot go from this one. Yeah. Okay. So in exam, I don't know. They can give you some time, these flow charts and they can ask you like, uh, what is the problem here? Like static analysis, what is the problem here? So dead code is a problem. In advanced level, they do that. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. This level they will not do, but in advanced level, they will give you a code and then they will ask you that, what is the problem here with, with respect to static analysis? Like infinite loop, dead code, variable not defined, something like that, they will make questions over there, okay? So this is the example, that's it. Next is the chapter number four. But I think for today it is uh, good, right? I mean, you have still enough time that you can go through the document for first three chapters, right? Yes. So, yeah. And then what I will do is that after this session, I, yeah, if you see that it is all going good, maybe you can make a payment also. And uh, you may need my phone number, right? If you, to make phone pay or something. Oh, uh, yes. You can WhatsApp me your contact number. A same number. It's the same number. I think we are all okay. already in WhatsApp. No, it's the same number. So there you can make the payment and then uh, I will also share you these documents. This PPT I will share with you and uh, below this PPT only all the questions are also there. You can make, yeah, um, yeah. you can go through these questions also. So everything is, this is one document where everything is available. Okay, PPT and question answers everything. Apart from that, I will just give you uh, this uh, summary sheets. Okay. So that so this is what we can do. I think we can wind up today, right? Yeah. yeah. So tomorrow, what we'll do because the fresh mind, we will start chapter four because I think there we need a lot of concentration and attention to solve the. Yes. Problem. So it's better to start tomorrow, ten o'clock. Okay. Okay. So tomorrow I, we are going to cover how many chapters? Like. Uh, let's see because chapter four is also very big. Chapter five is also very big. Okay. okay, so chapter four, usually I means whenever I'm taking it, it goes like three hours to four hours with breaks and everything. No, mostly four hours. We will take four chapter four only. Okay. The next four hours is there. If we see in that, if we can complete the complete syllabus, then it is done. Mm -hmm. Okay. If fine. not, then, uh, and not only done, it's like uh, the next weekend. If you have some doubts or some questions, you can send me during the weekdays. And I will go through them and maybe we can discuss it over the weekend, next weekend also, not a problem. Okay. Okay. Means until you write your exam, right? If you need some support in some questions or some topics, always you can reach me. Sure. Okay, sure. Okay, then I hope it has helped you somehow, some of this explanation to get things into detail, into details and all. Yes, and, it did. Uh, it did, right? Then, uh, then catch you then tomorrow, okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay, then, Kiran. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.